Fox Sports Southwest is proudly presented by AT&T Uverse TV. The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Southwest. A week is not a large sample, but two series wins. The beginning of the Rangers season has been promising. The early winning tone has been set by the man who leads it all off, Ian Kinsley. After six games, he looks to be on a mission, getting on base, scoring runs, and driving them in as well. Week two begins with a team as tough as the Rangers will face all season long. Tampa Bay rolls into Arlington with the always tough Jeremy Ellickson starting game one. Texas team, your Texas Rangers beat the Rays next on Fox Sports Southwest. It's a cloudy and mild evening here in Arlington as the Rangers get set to open their second home series of the season. Tonight, the first of three with the Tampa Bay Rays in town. And welcome along, everyone, with Tom Green, Steve Busby. Glad you could make it on this Monday night of Ranger baseball. And Rangers now have won the first two series that they have played, and, you know, that's one of their stated facts. They would love to do that all year long. Tonight, it's going to be a matter of relying on a guy who, again, is getting off to a hot start, and that's Ian Kinsler. He's off to a great start, Buzz. He had a game-winning hit in our home opener. He's playing excellent defense, turned a great double play to help you, Darvish, in last night's game. Also had several hits and a walk in last night's game. He's essentially a pull hitter, and he does that to drive in the first run, and then aggressive base running takes second. But he's also driving the ball to right field a little bit better this year, and that big three-run homer was the big hit of the game. That kind of put it away for the Rangers. Yeah, you know, that was Ian's first home run to right field since 2009. Well, that's a good sign if he can continue that kind of thing. Well, Ian Kinsler and the Rangers tonight will be backing Alexi Ogando. Ogando coming off six-plus shutout hitting against the Astros. So Ogando looking for his second straight win. Rangers looking to open another series with a W. Rays and Rangers coming up next on Fox Sports Southwest.
is brought to you by Ford. Take the EcoBoost Challenge at your Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. By the wireless receiver only from AT&T Uberts. Visit att.com slash free your TV. Rethink possible. By Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. And by a reminder from Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Designate a driver. Alexi Ogando headed out to the field. This is uh, his second start of 2013. He had one start last year. Remember, that was the uh, start that he pulled his hamstring in San Francisco. Other than that, he had not started since 2011. Here's the race lineup. Brought to you by McDonald's tonight. As McGinnings, the center fielder, leads off. Sam Folds in left. Ben Zobrist bats third place second. Kevin Longoria, the cleanup man, plays third base. Matt Joyce is in right field. Junel Escobar is the shortstop. Batting seventh, playing first, James Loney. Catching tonight, Jose Molina. And the DH batting ninth, Kelly Johnson. And for the Rangers on the mound tonight, Alexi Ogando had a career high against Houston. Struck out 10 batters on Wednesday. Has been tough in his career against right-hand hitters. An average below 200. One of nine pitchers in Ranger history to have 30 starts and 100 relief appearances. He's been a very good reliever. He wants to be a very good starter. That's the role that he wants. He's got that role, and he's off to a good start. Well, Lexi set to work. Desmond Jennings, the center fielder, leads things off. Jennings hitting a 250 for the young season. And the first pitch is Heimer. Great diving stop by Beltre. Oh, what a play, Adrian. We talk about a gold glove third baseman. There's the reason why. Right off the bat, first pitch of the game with most third basemen playing in the same spot, that's a double. Man on second, nobody out to start the game. Instead with Adrian, it's one man up, one pitch, and one out. That's quick reaction. My heavens. Yeah, a strong, accurate throw. <laughs> okay. I guess that's how it's going to be tonight. Beltre is setting the tone, and the first pitch uh, to Sam Bull will be going outside. Another to look at it. Yeah, concentration. Wow. Pitch to full is a strike that evens things at one and one. Yeah. Now Beltre back to back. Gold gloves. He has four in his career. And back to back platinum gloves, which signify the best defensive player at any position in the American League. I'm going to say in baseball, but in, in effect, it, uh, it's, it's voted for the American League and the National League. Stack Adrian up against anybody in baseball. Pull foul and full now. Uh, still a one ball, two strike count. In Ogando's first game against Houston, we remarked the whole game, the improvement that he's shown in his off-speed pitches. And that's one of the keys to being a good starting pitcher. He's always had the good fastball and the hard slider. But in that game, he threw curveballs and he threw changeups and he threw them successfully. And already in this game, just a couple of pitches to full, he got a strike with a changeup way out in front of a pretty good curveball. There's another changeup. So we've seen A.J. Pruszynski behind the plate making pitchers like Ogando use all his pitches. Mm -hmm. and so far, Ogando has shown a real nice aptitude for the curveball and the changeup. 2 2, call strike three. Right on cue, there's the hook. There it is. And full caught window shopping. That is out number two. Now, to, to see the numbers that Alexi has put up in his career, Buzz with basically a fastball and a hard slider, are pretty remarkable knowing that a hitter pretty much has always gone up against Alexi looking for something hard. There was nothing slow. Hard slider, right. hard fastball. But because they were such good pitches, he, he had a great deal of success. Sure. Now you add a curveball and a changeup to that. Possibilities are pretty intriguing. And there's a curveball. First pitch to Zobrist. It's 0 and 1. Zobrist off to a great start. He and Evan Longoria in the middle of this raise order, both pummeling the baseball. And goes after the next pitch, pops it up. Center field, Gentry. Jogging in, makes the catch, and that'll do it. 
No thanks to Adrian Beltre and uh, nine pitches later, Ogando off the mound. Rangers come to bat, scoreless. And to start things off, let's go down to Emily Jones. Em? Well, Buzz, as you well know, Ron Washington has preached it since he got here. Just win series, and that is exactly what the Rangers have done in these first two series. David Murphy has tempered enthusiasm. We've only played six games. Um, you know, we need to continue uh, to maintain and keep the right mindset because things can turn south pretty quickly. Uh, you know, if you get too happy with, you know, the first week and what you've done. So there, there's still plenty of work to be done. We just need to keep grinding away. So it is a small sample size, however, encouraging to see how this team is winning pretty complete games as far as the starting pitching from the bats and, of course, the bullpen guys. Plenty to uh, provide a good foundation for the rest of the season, albeit just a week. All right, Emily, thank you. Yeah, you put a few weeks together. Now you're talking about... Uh, getting through the first month of the season and then all of a sudden it's the all-star break and it all starts with one series at a time. Ian Kinsler starting things off. Kinsler, of course, the big night last night against the Angels. Three for three. That big three-run home run the opposite way off of former teammate Mark Lowe. Got the Rangers out in front. Takes a strike from Hellickson. It's 0-1. Kinsler upped his batting average almost 100 points in last night's ball game. 333, the average for the Rangers' second baseman. Tapper foul down the third baseline. Let's take a look at the uh, Ranger lineup brought to you by Fred Loya Insurance tonight. Kinsler at the plate. Elvis Andrews will follow. Lance Berkman bats third. He's the DH. Adrian Beltre is the cleanup man. David Murphy in left. Nelson Cruz in right field bat sixth. A.J. Brzezinski catching. Mitch Moreland is at first and batting ninth, the center fielder, Craig Gentry. 0-2 pitch. Things are able to lay off that off-speed delivery. And Kinsler's seen all three pitches. He's seen his fastball, he's seen his changeup, and he's seen his curveball. Kinsler, the only Ranger thus far with multiple home runs for the season. Hammers that one foul down the left side. That's a foul ball that uh, Ian rolled down to Gary Pettis. And Gary, gonna be nice. Lob it into somebody. There you go. <laughs> that a boy. He thought he was playing catch Good with arm. Him. Yeah. <laughs> Good hands. He got rid of that in a hurry too. Out of play to the right. Well, last night's game, Ian ripped the ball down the left field line foul and then hit the next pitch into the seats in right field for a three-run homer. There's a the little guy. Got the ball. Got the ball back. <laughs> More importantly, he's got the uh, popcorn going. That's some kettle corn. <laughs> oh, got the ball back in the glove. It's in the glove now, folks. 
<laughs> two and two to Kinsley. Well, Ian, no surprise in leading the ball club in home runs early. He has done that now the last three years. Been the leader out of the shoot in long balls for the Rangers. Inside, and the count has gone full. So two or three. Try, nice. Trying to get aboard to start things off. Two of the biggest hits for the Rangers this year. One was the three run homer that Ian hit to right field. The other was the base hit that drove in the third run on opening day mm -hmm. here that he drove into right field, too. So that, that's a good sign early in the season to have balls going into right field for me. Payoff pitch is hammered down the left field line, but it is hooking foul. Oh, my. That ball just smoked and Jeremy Hellickson bringing those numbers into the game. First start against Baltimore. Pitched into the seventh inning, gave up five runs. Three of them came on a three-run homer in the first inning to Chris Davis. Three or fewer earned runs in 12 straight road starts. And of course, he was the 2011 Rookie of the Year. And outside, ball four. Well, Kinsler works the leadoff wall. There probably aren't many hitters in the league that hit more balls hard foul down the left field line than he is. Yeah. Let's take a look at the uh, Tampa Bay defense tonight. We have pulled Jennings and Joyce left center and right. Loney at first, Zobrist and Escobar up the middle. Longoria third, Molina is catching. And Hillickson is on the mound. And Brian Crew tonight, Marty Foster calling the balls and strikes. Scott Berry at first, Tim Wilkie at second. And Mike Everett is over at third. The one on, nobody out. Elvis Andrews at the plate. Ball one misses badly outside. Elvis at just 208. He had the one very good game down in Houston. Uh, he had a three hit game. And other than that, he's been a little bit quiet so far. But if you've got a normal leadoff hitter that doesn't have power potential, Hellickson probably doesn't walk him. But when Ian ripped those balls foul, Ellickson was being extremely careful trying to keep the ball away from him. And that led to a patient walk. Definitely not up there looking for a walk. Anything close, and he was ripping it. But it kept Ellickson from saying, okay, I don't want to walk you. Here's a good pitch to hit. Gensler, a pretty good lead at first as Ellickson checks it. And the fastball gets the inside corner. Elvis raised his arms up to let it go by. A ball and a strike. Elvis checking with Gary Pettis down there at 30. And Kinsler got whatever signs were thrown out by the Ranger third base coach. Ellickson ready. And the pitch low. It's two and one. Elvis has had good success against Tampa Bay in his career. What a 310 hitter. And last year, a little better than that. He had 314 against Tampa. And these numbers that we're giving you now include the uh, postseason between these two clubs. He and step that lead at first. Chopper foul behind Gary Pettis down the third baseline. The count is even at two and two. Now Elvis comes into this game hitting 208, but he's probably hit at least five or six balls hard. He said two at least line shots right at the second baseman, three or four line drives right at the center fielder. So you look at the average and you say Elvis is off to a slow start, but if you look at the contact he's made through six games, it's a lot better than 208. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure Elvis will tell you it, it can start evening out any time. You know, it doesn't have to wait very long. Alex and ready and the 2 2 out of play to the right. Brad on hand here tonight. Rangers had a great opening uh, weekend against. The Angels. Crowds better than 40,000. A couple sellouts. 
138,000 plus on hand for those three games. Expecting around 30,000 or so here tonight. Alexson again ready and again the 2-2. Call strike three. And they got that inside corner. And Elvis caught with it. It looked like a cutter. Came on the uh, came in the front door that time, and Elvis couldn't do anything with it. That's very close to being a strike. Tough pitch to hit for sure. It's tough to pull the trigger on a pitch that's slightly off the plate and inside like that, especially when you know a guy's got a good breaking ball and a good changeup, and you've seen some pitches away. That was a great pitch by Helix, and he got the call against Elvis. So one away, and here's the Ranger DH, and that's Lance Berkman. Berkman with his first home run in a Ranger uniform. Snap throw to first. Kinsler back with a dive. Lance a two-run home run last night in that first inning against Jared Weaver got the Rangers back even after the Angels had put up two in their half of the first. And then David Murphy shortly thereafter put the Rangers on top for good. Ball one is inside to Berkman. Berkman has had good success against Hellickson. Two for four. And both of those have been home runs. And starting the year off. He's got that extra base knock going four straight games he's had at least one extra base hit that time call Berkman backing out of the batter's box to the infield for Tampa pulled around to the right outfield just about straight away two balls no strikes we were talking about that home run last night here it is in the first inning uh, looked like a hand and breaking ball. Looked like Lance might have hit it a little bit off the end of the bat. Might have been one of those balls that benefited a little bit from the jet stream, but same for both teams. That's Each right. team has the opportunity to hit those. Angels mm -hmm. hit a few of them the day before. Two and all the count. Popped up behind home plate. That will settle into. Not the tenth row of seats, and the count moves to two and one. Yeah, the, the jet stream during batting practice was so dramatic that all—that's what the players were talking about around the cage. Is every time they hit a ball in the air, they were wondering if it was going out of the ballpark. And there were balls that looked like they weren't going to go anywhere near the warning track that were flying out to right field. I don't know what it'll play like during the game, but they went through a lot of baseballs in batting practice. It looks like the wind might have died down just a bit since. Earlier during BP. Alex on a long look at first. And the pitch inside. Three and one the count. The ball was carrying so well that Elvis in his round went down on one knee, one knee and took a belt tray swing and hit it into the visitors' bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> and don't think they didn't hear the end of that. <laughs> what do they say about Imitation being the sincerest form of flattery. Yeah, that was that was fun to watch. 20th pitch of the inning, and it's a strike. The throw to second. Kinsler going to stop, and now he's caught in a rundown. He'll be tagged out by the second baseman Zopas. So Ian not trying to steal second. He thought that Berkman would probably protect him on a three and one pitch. Berkman took it. Kinsler's caught stealing. Yeah, if it's not a hit and run, then if that's what's going through the base runner's mind, Berkman's not a good guy to run on a 3 1 count because he's a patient hitter. And if it's not a good pitch that he can drive, then he's liable to take it. Mm -hmm. So if you do run when it's 3 and 1, you better think about getting a good jump. That's a perfect pitch to throw on up and away like that. Oh, I hate to see guys throwing 20 pitches to get one out, getting out on the bases like that. Now the 3 2 pitch. Inside ball four and Berkman. Draws the walk. A pair of walks and a strikeout in the inning. Dubon and Adrian Beltre coming up. Looked like an average jump at best, and the way Ian looked into the hitter, it looked like he expected either ball four or a swing. Yeah. But, you know, it wasn't a great pitch to hit. It was up and away. And a guy like Lance Berkman is not going to try to swing at that 3-1 pitch if he doesn't know the runner's going anyway. 
doesn't feel like he needs to protect the runner because that's not really a pitch he can drive. He'd rather take a chance on getting one on the 3-2 pitch. Now, in any event, now two outs. Here's Adrian Beltre. He takes the first pitch at the knees for strike one. Adrian kind of a wry smile as he looks back at Marty Foster. Two under the average. As you will note, a home run and an RBI for Adrian. Berkman a very modest lead at first as Hellickson is ready. A ball and a strike. About the last 24 ball games here in this ballpark. 393 for Adrian Beltre. Adrian has had good success against Hellickson. Three for four with a home run. Number of foul looked like an off-speed pitch. And the count is one ball and two strikes. Hellickson with that great changeup, and he will throw that about a third of the time. Some games even more. But that's uh, a staple of uh, Jeremy Hellickson. And it seems like really a staple of Tampa Bay pitchers. The young pitchers learn that change up if they don't already have one earlier in their minor league career, and they really have a lot of time to develop that. Off the fist toward left field. Long run for full still coming in a dive. He can't get it. It gets by him. Berkman being waved around third. Ford with the throw is cut off. Berkman sliding in safely. And on the looping double by Adrian Beltre, the Rangers take a one to nothing lead. That's one of those aggressive plays by an outfielder that turns out not to be the right play. Unless you feel like you've got a really good chance to dive and catch it. You've got two outs, a man on first. He's going to score if you miss it. You can hold that to probably first and second, a base hit, man on first and second, if you play it on a hop and then let the pitcher try to get the next hitter. But Sam Fold's a terrific left fielder. He's made a lot of plays like that. He felt like he could get to it, but when he didn't, Lance Berkman hustles and scores all the way from first base. Tom, is that a situation, too, where the outfielder has to be aware of who's running? Lance Berkman in that case running for first or does that make a difference you know in that case Buzz I think right now at, at this stage of Lance's career with the problems he's had with his legs he's not the runner he used to be and it just shows that if you dive for that ball almost every runner is going to score from first base that's so, what I mean if you're aware of who's running it if you're an outfielder and you're aware that Berkman's running would you tend to play that more cautiously than if it had it been a fast runner no, because I think if it's a fast runner and you lay back and catch it on a hop, then you keep him from scoring, too. If you dive, any runner's going to score. If you lay back and catch it on a hop, you'll keep the men on first and second with two outs and right. give the pitcher a chance. So, right. to me, unless you're 75-25 that you're going to catch it, you shouldn't try to catch it no matter who's running. Here's David Murphy. The count is two balls and no strikes. Berkman. Sitting next to uh, Jamie Reed, probably asking for a little oxygen right about now. Kind of a humid <laughs> night. Well, one thing we've seen in the first week of the season is that, is that Lance's knees appear to yeah. be very strong. Yeah. Because he's had to run hard a lot. Now we saw him in spring training uh, let it out a few times, too. So he, he has tested himself pretty well. Outside, three balls and no strikes. This is going to be a 29th pitch for Hellickson, and, and he got one of the out on the bases. The outs. Well, the Rangers making Hellickson work on his birthday. Hellickson turning 26 years of age today. And he fires a knee high strike. It's three and one. He's doing almost the same amount of balls as strikes 15 strikes, 14 balls. And a couple of the strike calls with you know, borderline pitches. So he's definitely trying to hit the corners. He's not an overpowering guy. Uh, Murphy pops it up on the right side. Zobrist, the second baseman, backing out, taking the call on the catch, and that'll do it. But the Rangers uh, get on the board, and two out walk to Berkman, the double by Beltre. We're going to the second. The Rangers won, the Rays nothing on Fox Sports Southwest.
Jim Knox. Jim? I appreciate it, Buzz. Nice Monday night crowd here at the ballpark tonight, having a good time. And for kids, here's some pretty cool. Texas Rangers Baseball Foundation once again will allow 2,000 kids from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, as well as Austin, to participate in the RBI program. You get some jerseys, equipment, and a lot more. To find out more information, log on to TexasRangers.com slash foundation. Buzz? All right, Jim, thank you. That RBI program, great program, and certainly the uh, Ranger Foundation doing some great work also. Two balls, no strikes to count to Evan Longoria, who's leading off the Rays' second inning. Longoria hitting at 333 for the young season. That ball three sails high. Orgando. Got a strikeout as he set down the uh, raise in order in the first. Also had a great play by Adrian Beltre to start things off. Falling behind Evan Longoria to start the second. And he throws a belt high strike. It's three and one. Longoria and Zobris, the two guys in the middle that of the raise order that you can't allow to hurt you in a game situation. There's ball four. And I don't know if that's playing into Ogando's uh, Walk on three and one to Longoria, but it's not a bad idea. Close ball game, even the even the second inning. Longoria did have a home run last year against uh, Ogando. The so one on nobody out here's Matt Joyce. Joyce getting the start in right field, hitting a buck seventy six. Rangers bring the infield at double play depth. They're looking for two, a step or so. Around to the right side. And the first pitch high for ball one. Well, Lexi was pinpoint with every pitch in the first inning. Tried a couple of breaking balls to Longoria to start him off. Didn't throw him for strikes and then couldn't throw his fastball for a strike. And the changeup misses wide. And Grzynski going to go and have a little chat with his right hand. It looked like he lost the feel for it yep. coming out here for the second inning. You are right about that. Strange how that happens sometimes, and every pitcher goes through it. Well, yeah, things is rolling right along, and all of a sudden it's like you'd never picked up a ball on that night before. Strange feelings. Yeah, let's see if Alexa can't go back to what felt good to him in the first inning. Do it all the count. Bye. Kids are into right field for a base hit. Ian was fooled on that ball. Look, it must have been a knuckleball because Ian took a step in and then started to go to his right. And at the last second, realized he had to dive for it. He came up. You see that uh, little motion he made that Elvis Andrews said, yeah, knuckled on me a little bit. Yeah, off the bat, it looked like Ian had a chance to catch it. He took a little stutter step, and it definitely did fool him. The knuckleball effect must have brought it towards second base and away from him a little mm -hmm. bit as well. Kind of stood his ground and then by the time he dove it had broken to his right. So two on nobody out. Junel Escobar the shortstop is stepping in there. Adrian Beltre the Ranger third baseman and uh, Mitch Moreland the first baseman up in front of the cut of the grass. They are there in case there's a bunt by Escobar. No bunt shown there and the pitch is outside for ball one. Escobar has enjoyed hitting here at Ranger Ballpark in Arlington. A 327 career average and 13 ball games. Breaking ball and cuts the strike zone in half. It's one and one. Escobar been with uh, two other clubs played with Toronto the last two years and Atlanta prior to that prior to coming over to Tampa Bay but Longoria at second and the pitch is outside two balls and a strike Alexi threw nine pitches in the first inning most of them strikes throwing 11 pitches without an out here in the second most of them haven't been strikes and eight of the the 11 pitches in this inning have been out of the strike zone. Playing Jekyll and Hyde. 
Could be a double play if Kinsler can turn it. He does in the dirt, and Mullen can't handle it. He gets away from him, and it rolls into the photographer bay. That's going to allow Longoria to score. And all the way to second base goes Escobar. Boy, the Rangers look like they had a double play, a tailor-made double play. And I don't know whether Ian didn't have a good uh, grip on the ball when he let it go, but it nosedive right in front of Moreland. Yeah, Lexi was struggling with the first two hitters. Almost got a double play ball that snuck by Ian, the ball that Joyce hit, then does get the double play ball. And last night they turned a great double play with Darvish pitching. Unable to do it right here. Ian's got time to turn it. Just makes a bad throw and Mitch can't pick it up. And then when he couldn't pick it up, the runner was able to score that what had gone to third base. Tough break. Now James Loney steps in and takes strike one. The only question was, was this going to be hit hard enough? And yes, it was. And the throw just even threw a sinker over there to, to Moreland. He couldn't quite handle it. Well, he might have, Ian, Ian had a little more time than the way he played that mm -hmm. ball. He, he tried to get rid of it quickly. He's got quick hands and a strong arm. He had a little bit more time to turn that ball. Joyce really wasn't bearing down on him like Ibar was last night. Well, the error just the third committed this year by the Rangers. A 1 1 game now, and Loney takes the breaking ball low. It is two balls in the strike. And when he gets to the spot, watch how quickly he gets rid of it, which is fine. He had a couple of steps to go. And might have been able to take a little bit more time. The other side of it is he can do that same thing 100 times and probably throw an accurate throw almost every time. Just didn't happen on that one. It's curveball that dips over to Loney, and the count is even at two and two. Two thirty-five, the average for Loney. Split time last year between the Dodgers and Boston. Breaking ball inside, and the count has gone full. So with one out, a runner at second base. First base is open, and you have a right-handed hitting Jose Molina in the on-deck circle. Loney's spent most of his career with the Dodgers, a little bit with the Red Sox. First baseman, not a lot of power, but he's a pretty good contact guy. Doubles kind of hitter. The right field, Cruz going back at the track, reaches up and makes the catch, bangs into the paddock. Oh, what a play by Nelson Cruz in right field. On to third base goes Escobar, but boy, Nelly saving an out and a run for that great catch. Yeah, the thing you're worried about, it didn't look like Loney hit the ball all that well, but the way the ball tends to shoot out to right field, you don't have to hit it that well. And off the bat, you're worried that it would stay in the ball, whether it would stay in the ballpark. Then you worry whether Nelly's going to be able to go up against the wall and catch it. And there's your answer right there. Nice running catch right up against the wall. Well, the second out of the inning, Escobar now at third base, and here's Jose Molina. Veteran catcher up there from the right side takes ball one as that breaking ball missed. Molina in four games, you see a 286 average. And that's off the plate outside. 2 0. Oh. Traditionally, have uh, handled Molina pretty well, but Alexi Ogando struggling with his command here. Misses outside, and the count goes to three balls and no strikes. That looks like an entirely different pitcher in the second inning from the mm -hmm. first inning. Yep. And hopefully, get out of this with one run, and go back out and be an entirely different pitcher in the third inning. Get back to what you did in the first inning. 3 0 pitch. That's a knee high strike. Molina waiting as Ogando comes set. 
sky to center field. That will send Gentry back a step or two. Now Craig reverses and comes in, makes the grab, and that will do it. Side retired. They get a run on one hit. There was an error and one man left. An inning and a half in the books. It is 1-1, Rays and Rangers. Well, 1-1 one, one ball game, Rays and Rangers. We go to the bottom of the second. And, boy, here's a good reason that Tom's always telling you, make sure you watch the game when you come out to the ballpark, and here's a good reason why. Yeah, here's an example of a line shot hit into the stands. Someone's going to stand up and put their hand up with no chance to catch it. The people behind them can't see it, and they will never know how lucky they are that that ball didn't hit either one of them. It went right between them at about 95 miles an hour. The lesson is when you're at the ball game and a line drive comes in your direction, there's only a handful of people in the whole park who can catch that ball with their bare hand. Most people are going to bravely stick their hand up like they can catch it. It's going to go right by them. And if you don't duck, it's got a chance to hit you. Don't look at it. Once it's coming to you, duck and get out of the way. Those two people are very fortunate, and it's a good lesson, especially if you've got kids at the ball game. So dangerous the way those balls come in there like that. And if it's a guy, he's going to stand up and think he can catch it. Whether that, <laughs> whether he even knows how to play catch, he's going to stand up and try to catch it. No, that guy stuck his hand up, but probably with no intention of trying to catch it. If he did, it would have broken his hand. But what he does is he blocks the people behind him. So instead of sticking your hand up, duck out of the way. Two and one, the count to Nelly Cruz leading off the Rangers second. Inside three and one. Well, Ellison kind of uh, picking up where he left off in the first inning, having trouble with command. Nelly Cruz off to a great start. He and uh, Lance Berkman have been safely in all six ball games coming into tonight, and that pitch fouled away. The count is full to Cruz. Nelson hitting in the number six slot. He'll be followed by the Ranger catcher. That's AJ Przinsky. You know, the other thing, Buzz, that if, if I was if I were coming to a game sitting down close like that, especially if I had kids with me, I would bring a glove because at least with a glove, even if you don't catch it, you can stick the glove up mm -hmm. and block the ball. Yep. And Cruz, guys, one to center. Jennings, kind of running a circle route, makes the grab. That is out number one. Now, and speaking of that, here's tonight's AT&T Twitter poll. And the question that do you bring a glove with you when you come to the game? And your choices are hashtag FS yes, I bring a glove, or hashtag FS no, I don't bring a glove. You go to Twitter and pick your answer. We'll give you the results later on in the ball game. Yeah, and it, it's great that the kids bring the glove, but most kids that age are going to have a hard time reacting to a line drive coming into the stands. And it's ideal if 
the dad or even the mom has played some ball and has a glove because you can protect your kids with a glove. And again, there's a few people in the stands, I've seen them, that can catch a 90 mile an hour foul ball barehanded, but not many. Foul ball off the glove of Zobrist, but it'll go for an error. Well, Brzezinski aboard, and that is the first error committed by Tampa this year. As Obrist is so steady, he can play every, basically every position on the field. I've never seen him catch, but he probably play and maybe has played every other position, and he plays them all well. But that's a ball that he's going to make the play on 95% of the time, maybe more than that. Just get to it, get off the side of his glove. Oh, two teams that have combined for two errors thus far in the season have, beat, have made two tonight. One apiece. Now one on, one out. Here's Mitch Moreland. Getting in the number eight slot tonight. And takes a knee-high strike. It's 0-1. Mitch has hit in his last two ball games. Had a hit in each of those contests. So that batting average now at 0-95. And remember, he started the year 0 for 13. Oh God, with a home run here and long home run on opening day, the home opener. Inside, one ball, one strike. Hellickson reading the signs, bent over at the waist, and the right hander. Comes set now a check of Przinski. Hit and run was on, and Mitch chopped one foul at home and came and got a piece of him. But we'll come back and try it again. Przinski off with the pitch, and he'll retrace his steps. Mitch back to get a new piece of the lumber. Moreland one for four in his career against Jeremy Hellickson. Nelson about ready to unload his 42nd pitch of the evening. Okay, is the sign from Molina, a check of Brzezinski. Up and in that fastball getting more than it off the plate just a bit and it evens the count at two and two. Now, Hellickson definitely likes to throw in. In fact, several of the outs have been fastballs that have jammed the hitters. The strikeout was a pitch in to Elvis. So he, he depends on good command and being able to throw in, not being an overpowering guy. And a chopper foul off the screen in front of the Ranger dugout. I don't see quite as many change-ups for him tonight, though. A lot of two-seam fastballs. Yeah. Opponent batting average-wise, uh, since 2010. Tonight's opposing starters up there in the top five in that category. Alexi at uh, 222 and Hellickson at 228. Some guys that know how to pitch a little bit in that uh, in that list. Pulled on the ground, diving stop. Can't get it to safely aboard as Loney scrambling after the ball. Couldn't get there in time. And the Rangers with an error and an infield hit. Now have runners at first and second for Craig Gentry. Well, speaking of the changeup, that was a changeup and a good one. Had Mitch way out in front of it. And Loney with a head first dive gets a little bit of a glove on it. Ball rolls far enough away where he can't get back to it in time. But good changeup down and away. Mitch just puts it in play off the end of the bat. Would have been a pretty easy play for the second baseman. Yeah, a very difficult play for the first baseman. And I think that's where a first baseman, that's where you need to know where your fielders are playing beside you. And the Rays were pulled around to the pull side to the right for Mitch Moreland. You're right, Tom. That would have been an easy play for Zobris, the second baseman. I'd love to take advantage of this opportunity. First and second, one out. Greg Gentry. Looking for his first RBI of the season. Owen won the count.
Craig in his first two starts. At 429 average. Rangers have won both the games that Gentry has started this year. Tonight making his third start in center field. Oh and two. Gentry has never faced Hellickson. And Hellickson is sneaking up toward that 50 pitch mark. He's going to be at 47. Pierzynski at second, Morgan at first. One out here in the Rangers' second inning. Fouled off the fist. Good job by Gentry to spoil a pretty good pitch. Greg had a great spring. He and Leonis Martin really had an outstanding battle for the job as a center fielder. Both of them had super springs. And as a result, the splitting playing time. That pitch just barely inside. It's one ball and two strikes. Greg hit better than 350, and Leonis Martin hit just under 350. Hellickson okay is the sign the right hander sets the belt the one two pitch and the count is even now Molina going to go out and have a chat with his right hander this is the third hitter tonight that Hellickson has gotten ahead of 0 and 2 and then have the count go to at least 2 and 2 and that's very unlike Jeremy Hellickson it could be that's what Molina is reminding him of so, hey you get a guy down on the count 0 and 2 bury him don't give him a chance to get back up. Sometimes easier said than done. And he's going to need at least 50 pitches, which is what this next one will be. With one out in the second inning. Out of play to the right. And Jeffrey continuing to spoil tough pitches. Alex in a big sigh, and the 26-year-old right-hander ready to go. Outside, ball three. Well, from 0-2 to 3-2, and, and this has got to be for a guy like Hellickson, who's used to being able to throw strikes at will, a frustrating evening. He's got a couple aboard. Uh, Drzinski on by the error. Morgan on with the infield base hit, and the Rangers have really made Hellickson throw a lot of pitches here tonight. A full count with one out. And Gentry backs out momentarily. Greg trying to get aboard, and up next will be the top of the order. Ian Kinsler waiting in that on deck circle. Alexson with a payoff pitch. Double play ground ball if they can turn it quickly. Zilgers back to first, and the double play goes 6 4 3. Rangers are finished in the second. No runs to hit, an error, and one left. We go to the third. Rangers one, raise one on Fox Sports Southwest.
Harper is landed. Play today because Powerball has changed for the bigger. On we go to inning number three here at Rangers Ballpark. It'll be the number nine man to start things off for Tampa Bay. Crowd on a very comfortable evening. Temperature in the low 70s tonight. Wind still coming in from right center field at a pretty good clip. And Kelly Johnson, the number nine man, the designated hitter, starts off by taking ball one. Johnson hitting just 154 in the early going. And a strike on the off-speed pitch. Gets Ogando even in the count. Yeah, Johnson played for the Blue Jays last year. Played 142 games for the Blue Jays. Rip and a miss. Hit a home run. A big home run against the Rangers last year. Can't remember the game, but it was in Toronto. He only hit 225, but he's got some power. You know, Gondo pumping up a fastball at 93, and that evens the count at 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, Johnson and uh, Escobar were the starting uh, double play combination for the Jays for most of last year. Now ball pulled foul. And we'll come back and try it again. Of course, last year in Toronto was a remake of the MASH unit. They had guys going on the disabled list right and left. Inside, three and two to Johnson. So Kelly Johnson trying to lead things off by getting aboard. Desmond Jennings, the leadoff man, is waiting in the on-deck circle command, for the Rays. Command a huge issue. In this ball game for both pitchers, there's a Gondo with 2-2, two, 3-2 two, two breaking ball missed with both of them. He's now thrown 20 balls and 19 strikes. Very uncommon for Ogando. Now it's time for a Mazda game break. Here's Rick Renner. Rick. All right, Rick, one on, nobody out, and the breaking ball is high to Desmond Jennings. Jennings hit the first pitch he saw tonight. Down to third, and a great play by Adrian Beltre to get the first out of the game. Now, Mike Maddox, Ranger pitching coach, is going to go out and have a talk with Alexi Ogando. So whatever they were able to talk about while the Rangers were hitting did not solve the problem for Ogando as he went out to begin throwing here in the third inning. Yeah, it's tough to see the second inning and the start of the third inning after you're looking at the first inning. First inning, he threw nine pitches. Had a strikeout. But since then, boy, the command has been a major issue. He's now at 21 balls and 19 strikes. One ball, no strikes. The breaking ball is wide. It's 2-0. Oh. In the Houston game and in the first inning, he threw his he threw his curveball for strikes at will. In fact, there were times it looked like he was throwing his curveball because that's the pitch he thought he could throw for a strike. Two and one as Jennings helps out Ogando. Hellingson's benefited from a caught stealing and a double play. He was over 50 innings in two innings. He pitched out of a couple of jams. Kind of fortunate, really, to only have given up one run. The second for one, the return, not in time. Jennings, pretty good speed getting down that line. A good job, though, to get the lead runner, Johnson. So one out, one on. Sam Fuld now will come to the plate. Hey, you, you talk about the, the throw that Ian made, and maybe he could have taken more time the first time. It, it doesn't really matter because it, watch how quickly he turns this. It's the same thing. And there's the accurate throw that you'll see almost every time. It was just one of those balls on the first double play that Ian threw low. Something he doesn't do very often. That was actually a tougher one to turn because the runner was bearing down right on top of him. Mm -hmm. Yep. First pitch to Fold is low and inside for ball one. Fold called out on strikes back in the first inning. One RBI, fourfold, and he is now 0 for 2 in his career against Ogando. Off the fist, Kinsler, the second, oh, and out at second and safe at first as Boland came off the bag, according to 
the first base umpire Scott Barry. I didn't think they'd have any shot to hit the play back to full. It was a slowly hit ball. And Ian and Elvis did a nice job to get the lead runner. Jennings has got excellent speed. You see Jennings in front of Ian. They get the out there. Elvis takes a little extra time to get out of the way and fires it back to first base. Let's see how close that play was. Mitch was off the bag, reached back and touched it after he got to the bag. No two gone. Here's Zobrist. First ball swinging to deep right field. It's hanging up a bit though, and Kelly Cruz stops shy of the warning track. Good meeting at the mound by Yes, Mike it Maddox. was. Whatever he said, it uh, certainly was taken to heart. No runs, no hits. One left on a walk. Two and a half in the books. 1 1, Rangers and Rays. Baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Ford. Take the Eagle Boost Challenge at your Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. And by Jack in the Box. Try the new Hot Mess Burger. It's loaded with spicy jalapenos, onion rings, and gooey pepper jack cheese. Well, Alexi Ogando back on the Ranger dugout, and he's had a few visitors down there. Ron Washington spent a little time. Talking to Alexi, looks like Mike Maddox is talking to him a little bit and trying to encourage him. Mike telling him get back on top of the ball, throwing that downhill plane, and go ahead and pop on down through it. Here's Ian Kinsler, and he looks at strike one. It's amazing. People can tell people can talk to you until they're blue in the face, and until somebody says something that you actually hear that makes sense to your body, they might as well they're wasting their time. If you can't, if you can't feel it, if you can't visualize it physically, as to what that makes makes your body do, it's hard to change. And Alexi trying to figure out what it's supposed to, what a good pitch is supposed to feel like, and then once he feels that, he'll be able to repeat it. Oh, and two to Kinsler. He and began the game by walking. Ellickson to the plate. Off the end of the bat to short. Escobar. Kinsler is retired. That is out number one. And it brings up Elvis Andrews. The fans MLB.tv is celebrating 11 years. Join millions of fans and subscribe today. Watch every out-of-market game live online on your favorite mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.tv Premium. Visit MLB.tv today. MLB.tv is baseball everywhere. Elvis stepping in 0 for 1 tonight. He was called out on strikes back in the first. Take it, take it. 
fastball, straightens him up. One ball, no strikes. Elvis now 0 for 9 in his career against Jeremy Hellickson. Right hander back to Anders. Knee high strike. Hellickson. 0-1 in his two previous starts against the Rangers. Although he had a 225 earned run average in the regular season. In postseason, he pitched the uh, fourth game of the division series in 2011. Elvis shows butt, pulls the bat back. It's a strike anyway. And the count moves to one and two. Rangers won game four that year against Hellickson by a four to three score. You look at how consistent Hellickson has been in his brief career. He's had 65 starts, and 57 of his 65 starts, he's given up three earned runs or less. And for a young pitcher, that's a pretty good stat. Yep. Pretty consistent. Two I, balls, two strikes. Last year, he was sixth in the league in ERA and had a losing record. That's something you won't see very often. Someone in the top 10 in ERA with a losing record. Yeah, especially for a team that won, uh, played pretty well. Yeah. Elvis chops it foul toward the Rays dugout on the third base side. We'll come back and try it again. I remember the year that Nolan was down there with, with the Astros and won the uh, league ERA title, you know, like two one six or something like that. And there's Nolan. Ended up 8 and 16. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin Millwood did that too with Cleveland. To right field. In a hurry is the right fielder, Joyce. He makes the catch. Letter high. Joyce playing very shallow. And again, Elvis Andrews hitting the ball right on the butt. But coming up in. Yeah, and he's going to get some. Did they play him that shallow? He's going to drive some balls over the outfielder's head. We've seen him do it a couple of times earlier in the year. Looked like a base hit off the bat, and then you saw where Joyce was playing, and it turned into an easy catch. It's got to be at least the sixth, sixth or seventh ball this year that he's hit right on the nose like that, right at somebody. Lance Berkman takes a big curveball in the dirt for ball one. Berkman walked and scored the lone Ranger run back in the first inning. Lance and Jose Molina have uh, been around a little bit. This is not the first time that they have met up. Hellickson to the plate. And it's 2-0. Berkman came in third in on-base percentage in the American League, and he's already been on with a walk one time tonight. Lance sixth in hitting, tenth in slugging. The 2-0 pitch is low. Three balls and no strikes. Well, Berkman trying to get aboard. Two outs. Base is empty. If he's able to prolong the inning, Adrian Beltre would have a, a shot here in the third inning. And ball four. Back-to-back -back walks for Berkman. And indeed, Adrian Beltre will come to the plate. And as uh, Adrian strides to home, let's go down and say hello to Emily Jones again. Well, guys, I was talking to Lance Bergman today about his hitting style, his approach, how patient he is as a hitter, and how it's prototypical for Dave Maggot. And he says, you know, I guess it's kind of my MO that I've developed over the years. I just figure there's so many pitches out there I can't hit. I might as well take a look at a few before <laughs> I try to swing at one. Uh, yeah. But it's the kind of thing that's it, you just don't decide to be a patient right you've either got it or you don't and some guys have have the knack to know the difference between a ball and a strike when to be aggressive when to take it most of us look for anything close and let it fly but it's a real art to have that kind of patience and I would think it would t it takes a lot of work to a lot of di mental discipline you know seeing pitches and and knowing what you can handle and can't handle Toby Harry used to say he knew Toby would say I know I can't hit a curveball can't hit a slider so I'm not going to swing at one until that until I've got two strikes and it's amazing over a 
18 year career. How many times he didn't have to swing at the curveball because he, yeah. he had that philosophy. The other side of it is that's fine if you can really hit a fastball and he could <laughs> and Toby could. Yes he could. One one pitch coming to Beltre. That's a bit low it's two and one. Well, two quick outs. And now Hellickson's at 68 pitches this will be his 69th pitch. Show a lot of respect for the jet stream in the middle of the Ranger lineup. Hellickson in his game against Baltimore ended up throwing 94 pitches in six in a third. Two one pitch coming. Good rip and a foul ball it's two and two. One thing about Hellickson today he's been behind some hitters but he hasn't grooved the fastball behind in the count. He's still been able to run that fastball in on the fist of the hitters pretty well. He's been able to avoid that big extra base hit. He didn't give up an extra base hit. It was just a little blooper though. With the two people involved as a matter of fact with Berkman at first as he is now and Beltre at the plate as he is now. Chop foul. We'll try it one more time at two balls and two strikes. Well, if you're a middle reliever, set up reliever for the Rays, and you're out in the bullpen, you're probably doing a little stretching because you're going to be in this game a little earlier unless he really lowers his pitch count. This will be his 71st pitch in the third inning. Berkman at first, as Hellickson comes set. to left field. If it's fair, it's way out of here, but that's foul. He likes to throw in, and that time he got it in, but Adrian Tomahawk it up and in. He was ready for it. Just wasn't quite able to keep it fair. Kinsler hit the ball like that earlier. And Adrian able to get the head of the bat out there. Twenty twenty five feet to the left of that foul pole. Now we'll try it one more time at two balls and two strikes. Two hopper down to third short way to Zobrist. Longoria gets the force out and that'll do it for the Rangers. No runs no hits the Walker left stranded on to the fourth we go Rangers one raise one on Fox Sports Southwest. Jim. All right, 
Buzz, we are in the new Capital One Club right behind home plate. This thing is humongous. It stretches from on-deck circle to on-deck circle. They got two buffets serving prime rib and also some oysters and steamed mussels over here. The cold bar, a huge place. Come on by, check it out. Also, Capital One handing out tomorrow night Hugh Darvish shirts to the first 30,000 people. Buzz. All right, Jim, thank you. That, uh, I think we can take an inning or two off and yeah, head down there I, and get I some. I haven't been in that yet. That looks great. Capital One Bank, uh, new sponsor partner of the Rangers. Longoria fouls it out of play on the first base side, and he's down in the count now. No balls and two strikes to Ogonda. So Alexi coming out here throwing strikes from the get-go to Longoria. Well, he, let, he let off the second. He got behind him 2-0 and oh on two curveballs. This time he went right after him with two fastballs, and he's ahead 0-2. Oh Here's a third fastball. Just off the outside corner, a ball and two strikes. Longoria walked and scored the lone Tampa Bay run. There's a breaking ball that just missed. That evens the count at two and two. Ogando back to the plate. To right field, that's going to settle in for a base hit. That's a pretty good job of hitting right there by Longoria. As he took the ball softly the other way, but Ogando had him out in front a little bit. A leadoff single. That is the second hit of the night against Ogando. A leadoff base hit. Gets Longoria aboard and Matt Joyce coming up. Yeah, he's just trying to protect the plate. He actually swung at a pitch that was probably about six inches outside, which is why he had to reach that far for it. But he was able to serve it for a base hit. Behind the count 0 and 2. Worked it to 2 and 2 and they got a base hit. And the man with the other hit for Tampa Bay stands at the plate now, and that's Matt Joyce. He looks to strike one. Joyce hit a knuckleball line drive that Ian Kinsler had slip off to his uh, right as he was going for it. Ian had it red, and all of a sudden the ball just made a left turn real fast. Went for a base hit. And that was followed by the ground ball. The Rangers almost able to turn a double play, but a throwing error allowed the run to score. That was pretty much the sum total of Tampa Bay's second inning when they tied the game. 1-1 one, one pitch. A little number down the first baseline. And in fair territory, Moreland grabs it, tags Joyce. That is out number one. On to second goes Longoria. Look, it looked like and works like a sacrifice punt. Joyce having a little talk with himself as he uh, goes back to the dugout. That ball would have gone foul. Mitch comes in and catches it as quickly as he can to get the out to keep it from going foul. You can see it headed for foul territory. Mitch grabs it before it could and got the out. So Longoria now at second base, one away. Junella Escobar on via a fielder's choice, his first time up there. Buzz Louisville Slugger sent us each a nice shiny new bat with a yeah. name on it. Want to thank them very much. Louisville Slugger, I think when most people think of baseball bats, you think of Louisville Slugger. They're the official bat of Major League Baseball. They've changed their logo for the first time in 33 years. Popped up down the right side. That is going to reach the seats. The other thing they've done is their new bat, new wood bat, MLB Prime. Boasts the hardest hitting surface in the game. Should give the players confidence that when they step up to the bat with a Louisville slugger, they've got the best bat you can make. 60% of baseball players use a Louisville slugger. I know when we were growing up, Tom, that's all there that's was. That's all there was. <laughs> yeah. You know, any choice. Didn't even think about using anything but a Louisville slugger. Anyway, Louisville, thanks for the bats. Appreciate it very much. Out of play to the right. I didn't even check mine. Did they give us the right models? Mine was a P89 that I used. I'm no, I think these are probably both the same. Oh, okay. I don't know if we've got a particular model. <laughs> Very nice of them to do that. Very nice. Good looking bat. That's going to find a spot on a wall someplace in my house. A ball and two strikes to Escobar. Yeah. That Big rip and fouled it straight back. Yeah. 
Escobar, 30-year-old veteran shortstop. Facing the 29-year-old right-hander, Alexi Ogando. Lays off the breaking ball, and that evens the count at 2-2. Two and two. Escobar, born in Havana, Cuba. Originally came up with the Braves back in 2007. Got him swinging. There's the curveball, Tom, that you talked about, and Ogando gets his first strikeout since the first inning. Yeah, that's much better curveball, too. And one thing, Buzz, it looks like in the fourth inning, he's gone back to featuring his fastball, which I think makes the curveball even better. He's always had an excellent fastball. But he got ahead with the got ahead with his fastball and he put him away with a good curveball. Hey folks, tickets for groups of 20 or more start at only $11, and they offer savings of up to 50%. Group pricing is available in seven different locations and the all new, all inclusive center field railing. Learn more about group savings. It's offered for every Rangers game at TexasRangers.com. So, two away, here's James Loney, who flied to deep right field and sent Nelly Cruz all the way back to the warning track and then the wall. He reached up over his head and made a great catch on the drive by Loney back in the second inning. First base open and in a 1-1 game you might uh, consider being fairly careful to Loney. Left-handed hitter. You've got a right-hander in the on-deck circle and Loney shoots one out of play to the left. And that evens the count at a ball and a strike. Jose Molina, the right-handed hitting catcher. Getting ready in the on-deck circle. Only over 300 with runners in scoring position for his career. And Matt Kemp back to back in the Dodger order for a while. Out of play to the left. I guess Ethier was in that same part of the lineup for the Dodgers, too. They at one point had all three of those guys that were producing pretty well for him. Ogando in front of the count. Toloni at one ball and two strikes. Brown here in the fourth inning starting to get behind Alexi and Ogando not able to get together on the sign with Brzezinski. Well, the right-hander backs off now reading the signs once again. He has the one he wants. Good Popped basketball. him up. Left side, Beltre Andrews, Adrian Beltre in foul territory, puts it away. And Beltre helps the Ogando and the Rangers work around the leadoff single. Nothing going. On to the bottom of the fourth, 1-1. One, one.
right here on Fox Sports Southwest for Chevy Hometown Kids. It's not about the score, it's about the experience. There's some kids out here on a Monday night, very comfortable evening, 72 degrees as we get set to start the bottom of the fourth inning. And it'll be David Murphy to lead things off, followed by Nelson Cruz and A.J. Przinski. 1-1 ball game. Hits are even at two. As you saw, the errors are even at one apiece. Murphy, a pop out to second base back in the first inning. Ellickson about ready to throw his 73rd pitch of the night. And he drops in a big breaking ball for strike one. Murph wagging that bat back and forth as Ellickson comes back to him. One ball, one strike. Murph had a good spring. David hit uh, 313 in 24 ball games. And he has always enjoyed hitting against Rays pitching. He's a 308 career hitter against Tampa Bay. Ahead in the count here, two and one. A lot of pitches in this game, but only four hits. Make that. Oh, I was going to say five, and Desmond Jennings took that out of my mouth. You know, I'm not sure on that particular ball, but during batting practice, all the guys around the cage were saying that even line drive base hits looked like they were carrying farther than normal. <laughs> now, I'm not sure that that's the case on that ball, but Jennings, just like Joyce in right field, playing a very shallow center field, yeah. and that looked like a base hit all the way off the bat. Turns out, for him anyway, to be a relatively easy out. And so the way the ball generally carries here, the Jays are kind of challenging that by playing shallow. The one out here is Nelly Cruz. I mean the Rays. Jays might be doing that too in a different ballpark. It could be. It's the it's the Rays that are doing it here. Cruz a fly ball to center. His first go around against Hellickson. Right hander to right hander. Pitch just off the corner. It is one and one. Nelly also up there among the league leaders. You see, he's hit safely in all six of the games so far. Fourth in batting average coming into play tonight here. Ripping a miss off speed pitch. Cruz also fourth in total hits with 11. The one two. Well, that's another rocket to center, but right there Same is thing. Desmond Jennings. Kind of popping have, up this inning. Doesn't have to come in quite as far, but able to make the grab. That's out number two. And sooner or later, there's going to be a fly ball into right center field that would normally be caught that's going to go for an extra base hit. You don't see many people, and maybe Jennings is a great center fielder. He's got excellent speed. Probably a little bit shallow, more shallow than most center fielders play in this ballpark. It's helped him. Make a couple plays. Probably would have caught that one anyway, as hard as that ball was hit. Definitely caught Davids because of where he was playing. AJ Brzezinski at the plate. And he fouls off the first pitch and the Firestone Extra Mile Index. Show you the games caught of active players. AJ, 130 or so ahead of Ramon Hernandez. Yadier Molina, another one of the Molina brothers. 500 games behind AJ. Brzezinski, 100 games caught in the last 12 years. Fly ball, pretty well hit right field. Going back is Joyce at the wall. Goodbye! <laughs> well, he might have been playing shallow. He had time to get back there, but he ran out of room. Matt Joyce had to watch A.J. Brzezinski's first home run in a Ranger uniform. And the Rangers take a 2-1 to one lead. That's been a good start for A.J. Hitting close to 400. That's his first home run. Hit 27 of them last year for the White Sox, though. It won't be his last one. They have been looking for a, a big hit in this ball game to give him a lead, and they got it. 
Tried to get it in. Got it in inside part of the plate anyway. Not quite far enough. In the second row out there. That ended up 366 feet from home plate. Just in case, Joyce gave it a great try. That ball was barely over the fence. He had a shot at it. Now here's Mitch Moreland, who had an infield hit his first time up. Takes a breaking ball. It's 1-0. Oh. Oh. I'm still waiting to watch a player do what Bo Jackson did in Baltimore that time. Oh. Run up one side and down the other. i got to see if any other human can do that. that <laughs> never seen anything like that in my life <laughs> since. Either before or since. Moreland a drive. Well hit right center field. Look out, folks. Goodbye. Back to back. Moreland and Persinski. 3-1, Texas. You can't hit the ball much harder than the Rangers have hit it this inning. They've had two home runs and two line shots hit just as hard as the home runs right at the center field with Desmond Jennings. And they're catching up with Ellison a little bit here in the fourth inning. And he's throwing a lot of pitches. There could be a chance these jam 75, 80 pitches into this short a period of time that starting to feel a little bit tired. Seen that pitch to hit many times in this game. A fastball belt high and right out over the plate. Ellison put his head down. He knew that ball was gone. Yeah, that's that awful sound if you're a pitcher. Hate to hear that. Love to hear it though if you're a Ranger. And Craig Gentry takes outside for ball one. So Brzezinski and Moreland going back to back. And the Rangers have a two run lead. It's three to one. As Craig Gentry bats for the second time, Gentry grounded into a double play in the second. The Rangers have obviously made him work. They haven't sw swung at changeups down and out of the strike zone. Those balls in the dirt that sometimes you see hitters chase. It made him throw strikes. And he'll be at 87 pitches right now without being out of the fourth inning yet on this next pitch. Inside corner. There's a Cutter to a right hander that just does catch the inside corner. And Gentry backing away, thought it was going to be inside, but it's one and two now. 428 feet, by the way, the uh, tail of the tape on the home run by Moreland. That's the first time this year the Rangers have gone back to back. And Gentry skies one to deep left field. Going back is fold. He is at the track in front of the 390 marker and hauls it in. Now Gentry, a bid for three in a row, comes up a couple of feet short. Back to back home run, Krasinski and Moreland. The Rangers strike in a hurry. After four, Rangers three, Rays one on Fox Sports Southwest. the fourth inning they take a 3-1 lead into the fifth inning and joining us as he always does Mark McLemore of the 
Rangers live pre and post game and Mac, there were some sounds out there that hitters love to hear and pitchers don't like it so much. Definitely. I, well, I didn't hear it that often when I hit, but <laughs> definitely, definitely made some noise in the bottom of the fourth. Good to see. Good to see that happen. Uh, first time they've gone back to back this year, but uh, you know, the Rangers are. You have to like, I think, the way they've been able to, even just seven games, showed you different ways that this ball club can score runs, and they're doing it uh, early. Different ways and different guys. They're not relying on just the middle of the or the middle of the order. You're getting it from the top of the order. You're getting it from the middle. You're getting it from the bottom third. And, uh, that's how they're going to need to do it in order to win. Yeah, I don't think anybody was under the illusion this ball club was going to be, at least from the start, as powerful as uh, teams have been the last three or four years here. But uh, certainly the speed element's still there. The aggressive hitting is still there. The ability to work counts is still there. It is. All those things are there, and I think you're right. I don't think anybody expected them to hit for as much power. I mean, when you look at it on paper, you lose Josh Hamilton, you lose Mike Napoli. There are a lot of home runs here, yeah. 50 home runs here, and you're thinking, okay, well, where is it going to come from? Well, so far, guys have been uh, stepping up to the plate. Mitch Moreland's been swinging the bat well. krasinski has been swinging the bat well. Lance Berkman, the new addition, he's been swinging the bat well. So those guys are, are, are getting it done, and hopefully they can continue that all year long. You know, I guess, you know, on paper, it doesn't look like you can replace those, but there are logical places you can. Let's say Mitch steps up this mm -hmm. year and hits 25. He's capable of doing that. Yep. Let's say Ian hits 30 again. He's done that before. Right. Uh, Perzinski hit 27 last year. Let's say he hits 20. You may not have quite as many, but, you know, you've still got a team that's capable of hitting the long ball that other teams will be very loose. Don't clear up Murph. Murph hit one yesterday. Yeah, yeah, you know, right. Murph hits 15 to 20. That that takes care of it right yeah. there. So there's definitely some power in the lineup. And the other thing you've got compared Hamilton and Napoli to Berkman and Przinsky. Berkman and Przinsky are going to see more pitches, get more walks, be on base more often, and so that gives Beltre, Cruz, Murphy more opportunities mm -hmm. to knock in runs because there should be more base runners. So it, it can work out good. Kelly Johnson drew a walk his first time to the plate. And it looks like Alexi Ogando settled back into uh, what we saw in the early going, being able to get that breaking ball in the strike zone and better command of the fastball. Back, I told Tom between the innings, uh, I thought Alexi kind of fell into a pattern in the second and third innings, like he had been in spring training, where it was things were tentative for him. He was kind of it looked like he was searching to find something that would work for him. And, and it wasn't uh, until he got a little talking to and the dugout went back out there and just said, here, here's what I got. See what you can do. Right. That, that usually works out best for pitchers, as you know. Just go out there and throw what you have and, and see where see what you can hit. Morgan takes care of that. One hopper. And that's out number two. I think Gondo last year would fall into that into that trap and Start relying on one pitch if a couple of if his breaking pitch wasn't working, his changeup wasn't working, he'd just stay with the fastball. And if he couldn't throw it, throw the fastball where he wanted to, then he was in trouble mm -hmm. and he wouldn't last very long. So Mike Maddox, I know, talked a lot this spring about Ogando specifically being able to throw the changeup consistently in the strike zone, not pinpoint, just throw it in the strike zone consistently. And then the curveball, taking a little bit off the breaking ball so that he came up with a curveball. And he said, you know, Agondo did a pretty good job of that in the spring for the most part. He said, now we'll see what happens when you take it into the season. And so far, the returns have been pretty good. And he, he breezed through six and a third, six and two thirds, whatever it was in the game against Houston. But if he's able to finish strong here and pitch six or seven innings, after struggling like he did in the second inning, that's a pretty good lesson right there, yeah. isn't it, Buzz? To be yeah. able to overcome what looked like a... Some kind of a major issue there early in the game. Yeah, and it wasn't just a couple of hitters issue. It was two innings worth where he just couldn't find it. That ball is hit well to left field. Going back is Murphy. He puts the brakes on in front of the warning track and takes care of it. Side retired in one, two, three fashion. Agato's now retired six in a row. Halfway through the ball game, Rangers three, Rays one on Fox Sports Southwest.
long ball uh, outburst tonight. And uh, get a pitching matchup by Chevron coming tomorrow. Roberto Hernandez, who used to be known as uh, Fausto Carmona on the hill. <laughs> That Those, sounds funny. I know Those it does. Guys. I can't I know, help but he was. It. He was. <laughs> Those were his numbers last year with Cleveland. And Nick Tepish with his major league debut. Those are the numbers last year with it's Frisco. Not like, for Jeff. It's not like, like one name is still the same. It's like an entirely <laughs> different person. Well, I, I wanna, if you're named Roberto Hernandez, how do you come up with Fausto Carmona for an alias? <laughs> wow. He probably about a birth certificate's about eight years difference, too. I mean, wow. yeah. You know. Jaime Garcia or something like that, I could see, but Fausto Carmona, come on. <laughs> Unless you had it. I could see, like, Fausto Carmona going to Jose Carmona <laughs> <laughs> or something like that, but not two just entirely different names. Well, they got that straightened out, though, and he, uh, he paid his dues back home, having to sit out some time. He had Kinsler 0 for 1 tonight, a walk and a ground ball to short. Hellickson still out there. Oh, a pretty good off-speed pitch. And Kinsler way out in front. One ball, one strike. Hellickson just over the 90 pitch threshold here this evening. Three hopper out to short. And Escobar fires on to first. That is out number one. Time for a Mazda game break. Let's go to Rick Renner again. Rick. All right, Rick, thank you. One gone on the Ranger fifth inning. Elvis Andrews. Hit the ball right on the nose last time up. Line to right field. 0 for 2 with a strikeout also, and he is up there trying to get a little luck going. In fact, you had a chance to see Elvis and work with him in the spring. I, I couldn't get over when I first saw him and in surprise what how different he looked physically this year. He looks like a man now. Yeah. You know, he's 24 years old, about to be 25, and, you know, his first few years, he just looked like a, a really young kid, but uh -huh. now he's matured. His body's starting to fill out, and he looks like a 10-year veteran, and he looks like a grown man. But he plays like it, too. He plays like he knows exactly what he's doing. He does, and he's done that for years. And, you know, we've seen him mature and seen him get better and better every year. It's just amazing, and it's going to be amazing to watch this. this well, I still want to call him a kid. Watch a kid. this kid, you know, continue <laughs> to grow over the, over the few years. You're 24 years old. You're still a kid. Yeah. He but came up in a perfect situation, too, with Ron Washington as his manager, mm -hmm. playing next to Michael Young with Omar Vizcala yeah. on the team. You can't get can't a better get support than system than that. And Wash stayed on him and coached him. Two and two. I think, Tom, you hit it on, on, the, on the head there when he said he stayed on him. You don't see a lot of that. Anymore, where mm -hmm. managers getting you know getting on that on, on an individual player and saying, "Hey, you've got to, you've got to do better. You can do better. You should do better." Mm -hmm. You just don't see it that much anymore, and it, it was good to see Wash be able to do that with with Elvis. Yeah. Yeah, and at the same time, telling him you you can do better, telling him how he can do it better. Right. There's one up the middle, and that's not going to be caught. Bill uh, Jennings picks it off the turf out there in center. So Elvis finally found a hole. <laughs> you see, I saw that, didn't you? There you go. He's got a couple bloopers and a couple of swinging bunts coming his way sooner or later. Now, the point I was going to make, though, about, uh, about Elvis, having Ron there, being able to be his manager and get on the way managers can, but also being a, the teacher that he is, saying, here's how you go about getting better. That's exactly. nice. Yeah. Nice combination. It is. You, you don't find that very often anymore either where a manager can show you, here's what I'm talking about. This is what I want you to do, and here's how you do it. Lance Berkman takes a knee-high strike. It's 0-1. Berkman, a couple of walks tonight. 450 average, and he is hit safely in each of the first six ball games that he's played in a Ranger uniform. Back to any defensive coaches that you had come to mind as playing a big role in 
your development as a big leaguer? Oh, absolutely. Cookie Rojas. Cookie Rojas. Yes. Cookie uh, grabbed me when I got with the, with the Angels and worked me over. And that double play, that will take care of the Rangers in the fifth inning. Double play goes 3-6-3. Three, three. And, Mac, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate right. it. We will uh, see you tomorrow night. We'll see you tonight after the ballgame on Rangers Live. All right, guys. 3-1 Rangers. Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. Alexi Ogando back to the hill for inning number six. Rangers on top, three to one. And a bunt attempt by Sam Fould goes awry. It's fouled off. 0 and 1 the count. Fould, a strikeout and a fielder's choice ground out tonight. 0 for 2. Batting average now. And a 118 for the early part of 2013. Ford short. Elvis unloads. Out number one. Well, I think one of the biggest differences, we're talking about Elvis and his maturity and working with Ron Washington. I think the biggest difference you see is how he makes the routine play. Yeah. Remember the first couple of years, he wasn't quite sure how to make the routine play. Sometimes he'd catch it and throw it slowly to first and it would sail on him. Other times he'd wind up and throw it as hard as he can. He's got a style now to get rid of the ball on a mm -hmm. routine play. Yeah, well, that's a great point. And that's, to me, that's a, watching him, that's the biggest part of his consistency now is, is that, that routine you're talking about. How do I go about fielding a ground ball hit right at me? What do I do with my feet and, and that kind of thing? How hard do I throw it? Yep. Ben Zobrist, a couple of fly balls tonight, 0 for 2, and he takes a strike to even the count. Another good changeup from Alexi. Zobrist, the switch hitter, up there from the left side of the plate. Delgando back to him. A little bit high, and count moves to 2 and 1. Zobris has a good eye at the plate. He's averaged about 90 walks a year for the last four years. So he'll give you a tough at bat up there. And the pitch inside, three balls and a strike to Zobris. He is hitting in the number three slot. He'll be followed by the ever dangerous Evan Longoria. Foul back just below us. Might have chased one there. Could have been ball four. High fastball. We talked about all the different positions he plays. He's averaged about oh, close to 20 stolen bases a year. The guy's going to hit 20 home runs, hit 35 or 40 doubles. And outside, ball four. Zobris draws the one out walk. That is the third free pass. 
issued tonight by Ogando. We'll take a look at your Ford leaderboard here this evening. Fewest at bats per home run. Active players and see Pujols leading the uh, the group. Caitlin Longoria down there, 11.9 at bats for every home run he has hit in this ballpark. Lynn Morno, Big Papi. Takes a strike. It's 0 1. Longorio, seven hits. Make that eight hits this year. They have all been singles. You don't really want to be around uh, when he breaks out of that single rut. Check swing and. Not sure what that was called. Scoreboard said it was called a ball. But I'll go with that. Ball and a strike. Good breaking ball to the outside corner. It's one and two. First time up, he's throwing breaking balls to start him off. Next time up, he threw him fastballs, and this time he's gone back to breaking balls. So looks like the game plan for Longoria is don't let him know what which way you're going to go. Fastball breaking ball. Zobris, the lead from first, the one two pitch. Check swing. Did he go around? No, he did not. That was a hard breaking ball there. And appeal down to first, and Scott Berry making the ruling. And that had some bite to it, didn't it? Sure it did. Is. That was a strikeout pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Attempted strikeout pitch. Oh, Rondo had him lean him. Made a quick move with his feet and then just kind of lazily tossed the ball over there. He gets rid of that in a hurry. Zobris is out. Yeah, he was going for sure. Boy, that was close yes, anyway. It was. Zobris, to, again, a pretty good lead. And this time, Ogando makes a quick move with both his feet and his hands. Joe Ortiz, a left-hander, loosening up in the Ranger bullpen in support of Ogando. Breaking ball, chop foul as Longoria went out. Got a pretty good breaking ball away from him and stayed alive. Ogando approaching the 90-pitch plateau here this evening. Right-handers ready. In the 2-2. Into center field. That's going to fall for a base hit. In the field on a couple of hops. Craig Gentry stopping at second is Zobrist. So a walk and now a base hit. And the Rays have the tying runs aboard for Matt Joyce. A carbon copy, really, of Longoria's last hit with two strikes just reaching out. And last time he stroked a soft single to right. This time off the end of the bat, a soft single to center field. Ron Washington making the slow walk to the mound. He's looking out to the bullpen the entire way out there. Well, you would think with a left-hander Joyce and Ron makes the motion. He wants Ortiz, the left-hander, here in the sixth inning. Well, young Joe Ortiz will come in for his third outing of the year in his rookie campaign. Alexi Ogando finished after five and a third. He leaves with a couple of runners aboard and the ball club leading three to one. Oh, Alexi. Off to a nice round of applause by the Ranger faithful. Ortiz coming on while he makes his way in from right center field. We will take a timeout. Be right back to action here at the Rangers ballpark after this.
Anyway, this weekend, it's the Texas 500. And we've got a complete preview of the action for you. Join us at the Texas 500 preview show. That's tonight at 1030, only on Fox Sports Southwest. 22-year-old left-hander Joe Ortiz. Swinging strike from Matt Joyce. There are the numbers on Joe. This is third outing of this young season. We were talking about the makeup of the Ranger bullpen and how young it is and how much they're going to lean and the expectations on the young guys coming out of the bullpen. Yesterday it was Robbie Ross in the sixth inning, Tanner Shepers in the seventh and eighth inning, two young lefty and a righty got the job done against the Angels today here in the sixth inning. Key part of the ball game, two men on, two run ball game. Ron Washington goes to Joe Ortiz. So the young guys can all pitch. They've got excellent stuff. And they're going to be counted on to get big outs for the Rangers, not just mop up outs. Ortiz, the 1 1. Tapper back to the mound to second. They get one, and that's it. The sliding Longoria is a race. Nice job by Ortiz getting that uh, out at second. Runners now at the corners with two outs. And Escobar coming up. Yeah, that is I think that is a nice out. That's the tying run. Now it's on first instead of on second. Easy play for a young pitcher. Just catch it and throw to first. Takes a little more courage to field that ball and fire it to second base to get a close out there. Nice play. One thing about Joe Ortiz, he's only 22 years old, but number one, he doesn't look 22. Number two, he doesn't pitch or act like he's 22 no. either. <laughs> You're right about like that. He's been around a lot. I'm sure he's feeling it inside, but outwardly, he looks calm, collected, and like a veteran. Ortiz, the 22-year-old from Caracas, Venezuela. Now we'll face Junel Escobar. Escobar is uh, 0 for 2 tonight. The pitch inside to him, one ball, no strikes. And uh, Joe being the ranking rookie also has another uh, <laughs> another duty that he has to take care of before each game. He inherited that from Robbie Ross from last year. No one handled that job better than Robbie Ross. Yep. Robbie was the best. I used to love it when they played the Bonanza song for him when he dried out on that <laughs> fake horse. To short. And the force play at second. Boy, that will do a good job by Ortiz. A couple of round balls and two big outs. And the Rays are gone on the sixth. No runs to hit. Two men left. Bottom of the six coming up. Rangers three. Rays one on Fox Sports Southwest. Time for the Sonic Slam inning brought to you by Sonic. Tonight's the jackpot is worth $400 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive In. Tonight, the Rangers are hitting for Deborah Whitson from Greenville. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Deborah Whitson from Greenville is going to win $25,000. You can register to win at any participating Sonic restaurant. 
A pretty good group of uh, Rangers coming up for Deborah. They won't be facing Jeremy Hellickson anymore. Instead, it's the right-hander Brandon Gomes, 28-year-old from Fall River, Massachusetts, on to take over for Hellickson. Young Joe Ortiz coming in, pitching like a veteran. Got two big outs, two men on, and a two-run ball game. Only one out. And out of that inning, Lexi leaves now with a one run and five and a third. And if the lead stands, Lexi would get his second win. Adrian Beltre one for two, a double and an RBI in the first inning. Gomes deals a little bit low. It's two balls, no strikes. Beltre, Murphy, and Cruz, four, five, and six. And Ron Washington's order here this evening. Ball three settles a bit low. Gomes in his third tour of duty with Tampa Bay at the big league level. Worked in 15 games last year. Fires a strike. 2011, Gomes had 40 outings. Always been a reliever. Padres 17th round draft pick back in 2007. Hard hit to left field. A sinking line drive. On comes full and he's able to make the grab. The Rangers only have five hits in the game and three runs. But they've hit four or five line drives that they caught in this game. Another one right there by Beltre. Back in the fourth inning, they hit two home runs, two line shots, and Gentry hit one right to the wall in front of the left field bullpen. Hit five balls hard that inning. Adrian Beltre will smile on his face after hitting that rocket out to left. David Murphy goes after the first pitch and shoots it foul to the left side. It's 0-1. Murphy lined out to center field last time up. Hitting out of that familiar wide open stance as he waits for Gomes. And foul off the left. Left hander Cesar Ramos loosening now in the Tampa Bay bullpen. Jose Molina flashed out the sign, and Gomes is ready to work. The 0-2 popped him up. Out in on David's fist. And first baseman James Loney right near the bag at first. Able to handle that pop-up. That's out number two. And now it'll be Nelly Cruz turn. Well, you knew whenever you face the Tampa Bay Rays, you're going to face good pitching. And that was no matter who was starting or who is starting. And also the bullpen. For the last, uh, well, in the, the Joe Madden era, in the last seven years, they have been very, very solid pitching wise. The one thing they've been able to do over the years is mix and match in their bullpen. They got a lot of guys back this year that were here last year. They've changed closers. They've sometimes turned over 75% of their bullpen. They've mm -hmm. always gone out and got guys that can get the job done out there, though. Madden. Nobody got the job done like Fernando Rodney last year. Where somewhere he had the lowest DRA in history for a pitcher with like more than 60 innings. Wow. He only gave up five earned runs yeah, last year in about seven innings. He's given up three so far this year. In the dirt, and the count moves to a ball and two strikes. You know, 48 saves last year. Yeah. There's the big guy. And he's been on a number of different teams, the Angels, the Tigers, to name a couple. Boy, he settled in as an elite closer last year. Yeah, he found the strike zone, and uh, I guess yeah, I, that's no secret. I mean, he started throwing a lot of strikes, and that had always been his his problem. Cruz pops one up, shallow center. We got a trio of Rays in pursuit. It's going to be the second baseman Zobrist, and that'll do it. So Gomes comes in and gets three quick outs. Rangers gone. 
in order. We're on to the seventh inning. Rangers three, Rays one on Fox Sports Southwest. On the mound. Ryan Roberts has come off the bench and he will be the pinch hitter. Breaking ball miss from Ortiz. Roberts, Fort Worth product. 375 the average. Elvis to his left a couple of steps. Gobbles that one up at number one. And let's go over to Jim Knox once again, Jim. All right, Buzz, we are at the new 24 stand right behind home plate. This is where you get all these new items here at the ballpark. Casey's here to talk about the Beltray Buster. What's this all about? Well, like you said, this is stand 24. Everything is either 24 inches or 24 ounces. This right here is a full pound of hamburger patty, half a pound of bacon, grilled onions and cheese. Look at this. It takes two hands to hold, and it definitely takes more than just one person to eat this. Need an army with this. Buzz, we're going to bring this one right up for you and Tom. Tom, you can down this one. No wow. problem. All right, Casey. Appreciate it. <laughs> Jim, I don't know that I could do that, but I know someone that can. He's already guaranteed it. <laughs> would that be our uh, buddy now down I'm going to put the pressure on Kurt okay. Dykert. All right. Said he, if he hadn't already eaten dinner, he would have given it a shot tonight. That thing doesn't stand a chance. Yeah, that's some kind of burger, boy. That's not even the 18 for Dykert, is it? So that's a pretty big sandwich if all you have is a roll and a half a pound of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty big in itself. Bolina shoots it in off to the right. It's a ball and two strikes. You know, I, my luck, if I if I ordered one of those, I'd probably hurt my back trying to get it back to the seat to eat it. <laughs> oh, man. No, I, I'm not even going to delude myself into thinking that's possible. Jose Molina 0 for 2 tonight. Veteran catcher is flied out, grounded out. Check swing, he went around. And the tag will be applied before Molina goes back to the dugout. Two gone for Joe Ortiz and the Rangers here in the seventh inning. You know, the one thing Ron Washington said about his bullpen, he didn't want specialists out there. He didn't want a lefty that could only come in and get out a lefty. He wanted the guys to be able to come in and do that if that's what he wants them to do, but to be able to pitch an inning or two. And here's a good, great example of that. They pinch hit for the left-handed hitting Loney. Derek Lowe's warmed up in the bullpen, but Ron Washington didn't even flinch. He's just sticking with his lefty out there. The pitch to Kelly Johnson outside. 
Johnson 0 for 1. He has grounded out and walked tonight. Ball two. So he's got four outs on 13 pitches. Ortiz okay is the sign and the left-hander back to the plate. Two and one. Ortiz listed at 5'7 and if you ask him, I don't think he'd own up to 5'7. I think I a think tick shorter. Eric Eric Nadell uh, was talking to Joe and asked him if he was five foot whatever it's listed, and he yeah. said, with my shoes on. <laughs> so he was pretty honest about it. <laughs> Two balls and two strikes. Oh, he looks like seven feet tall the way he's throwing right now. Boy, he's going for the strikeout right there, yeah. too. Just missed that outside corner. Well, the count has gone full to Kelly Johnson. Hmm. Payoff pitch. Weekly hit cut off by Beltre. Adrian slings it over to Morgan. And that'll do it. Three up, three down. That is five straight. Sent down by Ortiz. Stretch time at Rangers Ballpark. Texas 3, Tampa Bay 1 on Fox Sports Southwest. Now 3-1, the Rangers leading, and let's take a look at the AT&T U-verse reverse replay. And it's the difference in the ballgame back in the fourth inning. First it was A.J. Perzinski, his first home run in a Ranger uniform. And then Mitch Moreland, deep to right center field and gone into the bullpen. Back-to-back -back home runs. That is the difference in the contest as the Rangers lead it 3-1. And A.J. Perzinski will lead things off here in the Rangers' seventh. And then Mitch right behind him. Cesar Ramos, 28-year-old left-hander, starts things off and a base hit into left field for Pierzynski. And AJ going the other way. I'm gonna have to check his fingers, make sure he's got them all still attached. That's all right. He's got a home run to right and a little slicing line drive to left. Cesar Ramos on the mound. Been used frequently so far this year. This will be the fifth time he's been used. And Ryan Roberts remains in the ball game. He pinch hit for James Loney in last half inning. He's the first baseman now. The one on nobody out here is Mitch Moreland, who is two for two tonight. One thing about AJ, he'll make some contact. Last year's the most he ever struck out in a season. It was 78 times. And it's in an age where it's actually somewhat rare, it seems, for a guy to strike out less than 100 times yeah. if he's playing every day. Yeah, and if he hits more than 10 home runs. Yeah. More than an infield single in the second inning. And then his 
long home run 428 feet to right center last time up. We look at the difference in strikeouts last year Hamilton struck out 160 times. If Napoli had batted as many times he would have struck out 150 times. Yeah. In the same amount of bats Brzezinski is probably going to strike out 80 times and Lance Berkman is going to walk more than he strikes out. He's probably going to strike out about the same so you can cut the strikeout totals in half. That adds up to a lot more base runners. It doesn't mean one's better than the other it just means that both can be successful and they're different. Well it is better from the standpoint of more guys have an opportunity to drive you in if you get on base. Yep. And that's the standpoint of actually producing runs for those guys. Yeah, that's true. Two and one the count to Moreland. Pulled to the right side through for a base hit. Krasinski at second will put the brakes on <laughs> as Joyce just gets to the ball in a hurry and somebody pulled the rug out from AJ. Well it was a good thought but a smart decision. Well, Mitch Moreland three for three after this round ball through to right field. Well, that's what you need to get a good feeling start getting hot let those ground balls roll through there. Mitch had an infield hit it was off the first baseman's glove. Rolls that ground ball through he's also got a long home run so good day for Mitch. Be feeling good after today. After today. Now Joe Madden out to uh, the mound he's going to call for the right hander. Kyle Farnsworth, so the big right hander come on. He will place Ramos with two on, nobody out. We will take another timeout here at Rangers Ballpark, 3 1 Texas. and expect to see the Major League debut of Nick Tepish tomorrow. He started the season in AAA because of the way the schedule worked out. That number five spot in the rotation doesn't come up until tomorrow, so they've been carrying an extra position player. Now, the prevailing thought is that the guy that will be sent down will be Julio Borbone. He is, of course, out of options, so that means he will be put on waivers and likely picked up by another team. Of course, none of that is official. That's just the prevailing thought in the room, and in fact, Julio discussed it this afternoon before today's game. He said he has no control, obviously, over the situation, but he is excited about the future of his career. He's had a wonderful time in Texas and uh, is anxious to see what the next 24 hours holds, guys. All right, Emily, thank you. Yeah, Nick Tepish, uh, you can bet there are a few butterflies churning <laughs> that young man's stomach. Veteran reliever Kyle Farnsworth probably be the one pitcher in the league that hitters. Oh, that's an interesting pitch. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at the second base. <laughs> one pitcher in the league that the batter does not charge the mound against. Now it's 6 4 and 2 30, and knowing what he knows, this guy, this guy's an imposing physical force. He's been a solid setup reliever for a long time. Mid 90s guy. Looks the same now as he did 10 years ago. 
Gentry around to bunt and takes strike one. Tough pitch to bunt. That high, high fastball looked like it was a borderline pitch. Craig thought it was going to be called a ball. Gentry checking down with uh, Gary Pettis, your third base coach. Pettis lets everybody know what the wishes of the skipper are in this situation. First and second, nobody out. Again around the bunt, and the bunt down the third baseline. It's a good one going to second. They get the fourth there. Nice play by Longoria. Got the sliding Mitch Moreland. It took a very quick release and solid throw to get the middleman. He's an excellent fielder, and he made a smart play. If you're the hitter, you want to bunt the ball toward third base. Longoria charged it. He's going for the double play, but not going to get a double play with Gentry running. The runners at the corners now on one out. We'll see if uh, Gentry tries to set sail for second base. He's got Krasinski over at third, and Ian Kinsler is the hitter. Ian tonight 0 for 2. He's grounded out a couple times. Walked back in the first. Rays with the middle of their infield. A double play depth. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, the, the, the important part of the play at second is Gentry moved the man from second to third where he's scoring a sacrifice fly, but because you got the guy at second, now you, you can't get a double play to get out of the inning. Mm -hmm. Most of the times you'll see a third baseman pick it up and throw it to first. There goes Gentry. The pitch is a strike. The throw to second and safe at second. And he was able to avoid the tag by Zobris. But Zobris took a good throw from Molina and turned it in to a stolen base because of where he caught the ball. Uh, good slide by Craig. He just doesn't give him anything to tag. You're right, Buzz. He came up, tries to make the tag by coming back with a glove. Gentry just gets his arm underneath him. Uh, Zobris catches that ball at the bag. Uh, Gentry's out. Yep, he's catching slap it down. But he's trying to call. catch the ball and take that tag back, and Gentry able to avoid it. Not so much for the force out at second. And now the infield will come all the way in. Down to one ball and one strike. And one out with the Ian Kinsler up there. Actually, you're in a better position because you've got Gentry running at second. Now. Yeah. And ball two is low. Ian, the team leader with the eight RBI. Opportunity here to get the Rangers a little more breathing room. It's currently three to one. He's got Pierzynski at third, Gentry at second. Popped up. That's not going to get it done. Longoria, the third baseman, still on the skin of the infield. Puts it away. And there are two gone. Now time for a Mazda game break. And once again, here's Rick Renner. Rick. Thank you, Rick. And with two outs, now Elvis Andrews will come up with an opportunity to uh, drive in a run or two with a base hit. Elvis single to center his last time up. He is one for three tonight. See that batting average now up to 222 and looking to improve on the RBI total. One ball, no strikes. Inning started with back-to-back -back hits from Pierzynski and Moreland. Farnsworth came in and took over. Now we're going to have a visit as uh, Farnsworth reacted. It looked like an little, he winced in pain after that last pitch. Tampa Bay trainer and Joe Madden going to go out there and uh, check with Farnsworth. You got to be careful when you're looking at pitchers and you, and you try to read their facial expressions when they're throwing. Sometimes... You'll mistake uh, a wince of pain for anger. The guy just had it himself. Kind of an awkward landing. You see that uh, Farnsworth went down a little bit, but uh, Molina immediately came up out of his crouch and wanted to make sure the right-hander's okay. 
Apparently he convinced everybody he is. Now the 1-0 pitch. And a play to the right. It's a ball and a strike. Elvis in his career against Kyle Farnsworth, one for six. Struck out a couple of times. 36-year-old Kyle Farnsworth out of Wichita, Kansas. Originally came up with the Cubs back in 1999. Sharp breaking ball is off the plate. And the count moves to two and one. Yep. Rangers have been able to uh, do some damage late in ball games, and that's made a big difference, especially in that series down in uh, Houston. Yeah, every one of those games is close with the starting pitcher still in there. Base hit, center field. Krasinski scores. Here comes Gentry. Here comes the throw. Not in time. Down to second goes Elvis. It is five to one. Well, there's a big hit, a two-out hit. Second and third, one out. Farnsworth induced the pop-up. He had one more big out to go, and Elvis, even though his average doesn't show it, has been swinging the bat great. Another line drive. This time it drives in two runs. High fastball out over the plate. It goes out into center field harder than it came into Elvis. Two big runs right there. So Elvis, a two-run single. And the Rangers now lead by four. Andrews going to second on the throw to home plate. And here's Lance Berkman. He fouls that first pitch off. It is 0-1. Hard hit ball. Jennings comes up. Trying to throw the wrong guy out at the plate, though. <laughs> Something new this That's year. That's a new one. You yep. know what, though? I've been watching games this year. A lot of teams are going to the signs on the bases, boy. I think a lot of caught them. on. Yep, and that was definitely started by the Rangers. Berkman pulls one deep but foul down the right side. And the count moves to 0-2. I saw Torrey Hunter do it. It looked like he was using maybe tiger claws or tiger paw yeah. for acknowledgement, and he got on the bases. Well, you figure it worked for back-to-back -back World Series trips. Why not try it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just like George Hendricks was the first one to wear the pants down around right. his ankles. Yep. Rangers were the first ones to come up with those signs on the bases. One ball, two strikes now as Berkman takes a Farnsworth pitch high. Lance 0 for 1 tonight. Rounded into a double play his last time up there. Walked and scored in the first, walked in the third inning. Two and two. Burton, as you all are well aware, the switch hitter batting from the left side against the right hander Farnsworth. And ball three is inside. Well, as a pitcher, Berkman just drives you nuts. You get ahead of 0 2, and you, you cannot get him to swing very often in a pitch that's out of the strike zone. No, and a lot of times, a pitcher's trying to throw a pitch out of yeah. the strike zone because he thinks you're going to swing at that's it. That's right. He just won't do it. And he's gone from 0 2 to 3 and 2. Payoff pitch. Just did get a piece of that one. Then you make a good pitch like Farnsworth did, an off speed pitch on 3 and 2. And He's able to get a piece of it. Hanging in there. Make you just as mad again. Big right hander climbing back up on top of the hill. Berkman waiting patiently. Andrus, the runner at second. Couple of runs across here in the Rangers seventh, courtesy of a two run single by that man. Inside ball four. Well, Berkman walks for the third time tonight. And runners at first and second. Here comes Adrian Beltre. Well, Lance has now walked seven times in seven games. Jim Hickey, the Rays pitching coach, call on the bullpen. Let's see if they can get somebody to answer down there. Here's Adrian. RBI double in the first. He is one for three. And 
Ball one is a bit wide. Now Molina may go out and have something to say to Farnsworth. You have to wonder that if Farnsworth didn't actually bother himself with the whatever got him. Jamie Wright, right-hander, former Ranger, up and throwing very quickly, trying to get loose in that raised bullpen. And Farnsworth, since the trip to the mound by Madden and the training staff, he just hasn't thrown the ball as well. Could be a coincidence. And it could be that uh, something, whether it be low back or leg, bothered him on that one pitch that he winced afterwards. There's a stat that's due to turn around right there. 0 for 22 against Kyle Farnsworth. Farnsworth with the 1 1. To right field. Going back is Joyce. Still going back and makes the catch as he steps onto the cinders of the warning track. Side retire, but the Rangers come up with two big runs on three hits. They strand two. We're going to the eighth. Rangers five, Rays one on Fox Sports Southwest. This season will feature a giveaway for the first 30,000 fans. And the new tradition begins tomorrow. It's Capital One Bank, the U Darvish T-shirt night. Game two of this three-game set starts at 7.05 tomorrow evening. Reserve your seats now at TexasRangers.com and come on out and get a Darvish T-shirt. Young man got himself a baseball. Now we head to inning number eight. Rangers now with a four-run advantage. It's 5-1 Texas. And Michael Kirkman on for his third appearance of the season. Michael is coming off an excellent spring training. Big expectations. The way Michael was throwing the ball in spring training, starting to put it together with his command and stuff that's always been outstanding. Kirkman facing the top of the order. First pitch to Desmond Jennings is off the plate inside. One ball, no strikes. Jennings 0 for 3 tonight. He was robbed in the first inning, the first pitch of the ball game by Adrian Beltre. Jennings did a screamer, a one hop smash just to Beltre's right. He dove for it, came up with it, and was able to scramble to his feet and throw Jennings out. 2 0 pitch from Kirkman. And ball three misses. Kirkman, the Lake City, Florida native, 26 years of age. It was 6'4", about 220. And this is outside, a four-pitch walk. That's not how he wanted to start the eighth inning. Now let's go to the uh, Twitter world and answer the AT&T Twitter poll tonight. The question is, do you bring a glove to the ballpark when you come out? And the uh, prevailing answer was, yes, I do. 59% of you said on Twitter that 
You brought a glove. 40 Lumber said, nope. Don't bring one. Well, some people don't have a glove, but if you do, it's wise to bring it. We talked about that a little bit. John Rodriguez now, pinch hitting for Sam Fold. Right-handed hitting Rodriguez off the uh, Rays bench. Jennings at first is Kirkman checks him and misses inside. It's two balls and no strikes. So six straight balls out of the strike zone for Michael Kirkman. And A.J. Brzezinski getting to go out and have a chat with him as uh, Ron Washington, Mike Maddox, and company getting a little concerned. This is where this is where managers earn their money, get gray hair, go to the sunflower seeds, start counting them. Four run lead. All you want you to guy to do is throw a strike. And no one's trying harder to throw a strike than Michael. There you go. Rodriguez taking all the way. And it's two and one. Kirkman ready a check of first and he will go that way with a soft toss. Jennings began the inning by taking four pitches out of the zone. Now it's two balls and a strike to the pinch hitter Sean Rodriguez. In the air left center field not very deep Murphy coming on along with Gentry David Murphy. Ball on the catch. Out number one and back to first goes Jennings. Yeah, big out right there for Michael. Take a deep breath now. Located the strike zone. Now Ben Zobris will come up. Turn around to hit from the right side against the left-hander Kirkman. Zobris drew a walk his last time up. That was in the sixth inning. Other than that, 0 for 2, a pair of fly balls. Kirkman's first pitch. Check swing. It's a strike anyway. Zobris this year against left-handers is two for four. Came into the ball game seven for 17 against right-handers. Oh, one pitch. Behind the bag at third and foul. As Adrian Beltre picks it off and the count moves to 0-2. Guy brought his glove and got a ball from Adrian Beltre. Might not have been able to make that catch without his glove. Feeling pretty good about it right now, though. That kid looks like a ball player. <laughs> Speaking of looking like a ball player, how about the swings that Adrian's little boy oh, takes? Oh, man. That, kid, that kid's a Seven. miniature big leaguer right now. Seven years old. Check swing and just a bit low on the breaking ball. It's one and two. Showed him last night taking a swing. That kid not only can hit, he's got some style too. Yeah, he does. Didn't quite go down on one no, knee, but, but almost. He's, he's thinking yeah, about it. He's headed that, that way. That swing he took might have been better than the one that goes down on one knee. That followed <laughs> through. Base hit to left field. Zobra's got a hanging breaking ball, and he pops it through the hole. So first and second, and one out for Evan Longoria. Now here's the Jimmy John's freaky first delivery of the game. Right out of the chute. That is freaky fast getting over to first base. Adrian Beltre. And then Nelly Cruz. James Loney sends him back to the wall and into the padding. Big smile from Nelly Cruz on that play. A quick visit to the mound with Michael Kirkman and Mike Maddox taking some information out there to him. Two on and one out, Evan Longoria, the hitter. And Mike Maddox going to call the Ranger bullpen to uh, get some action going. You see where Tom, Tom Foley is the third base coach. He's like right in front of the dugout. I don't even know why they have a coach's box. Better be careful if someone pulls a line drive foul though where he's standing right now. Kevin Longoria not very thrilled with that call. There's 
Tom Foley. Yeah, a little bit more than halfway to the third base from home plate, but well, if Longoria pull, gets an inside off-speed pitch and pulls it over there, Tom Foley's in trouble. Like that one. He didn't make contact, but it's on too. Someone watching may say, well, why is he standing there? And the reason he's standing there is with a runner on second base. He feels like the runner can see him better and he gets a better look at whether to set the send the runner or stop the runner when he's all the way down there. And other guys will stand in the box and then run down to that position. But like what Tom said, it is a nice little start there. That's just a little bit too close for my yeah, my comfort level. It's tough to pull a ball that far foul, but it it's been done. I know I wouldn't stand there if Ian Kinsley no, was in. No, that's a guy who yeah. just came to mind. <laughs> he didn't see you there and try to hit. Well, he wouldn't try, <laughs> but he's hit a lot of balls in that direction. Zobris, the one runner at first. Desmond Jennings a second. Ian Kinsler at double play death, looking for that uh, ground ball that will get the Rangers out of this inning. The left field. Murphy started back and has to come on. He plays it on a hop. He has to keep it in front of him. A sinking line drive off the bat of Evan Longoria that loads the bases and Shelly Duncan is going to be the pinch hitter. Longoria now has a soft line drive single to right to center and to left. That completes the round trip of the outfield on balls hit just about the exact same way. Soft line drives right in front of the outfield with two strikes. Curveball. This, no, this one's a little different. This one he got jammed on. The other two he reached out and hit off the end of the bat. That ball had some serious overspin on it. Murph did a pretty good job of just keeping it in front of it. And now they're going to send Pierzynski to the mound just to stall a little bit. Uh, Derek Lowe just got up. He was up last inning. And it sat down, and uh, now he's back up again, see if he can get loose. And that apparently was enough for Ron Washington and Mike Maddox. So, yep, he's ready, and that's going to do it. Wash is going out to the mound, and he will bring Michael Kirkman back with him. The call will be put out for the veteran, Derek Lowe. So Kirkman, with a walk and a couple of singles, leaves with one out in the eighth inning. The base is full, and Shelly Duncan, the pinch hitter, and he will face Derek Lowe. Pitching change underway. We'll take another timeout. Rangers leading 5-1 to one on Fox Sports Southwest. Here, excited about Rangers Live, presented by eSurance. We'll have complete post-game coverage coming up after the game with Mark McLemore, the fan favorite. Plus, we'll get clubhouse reaction from Emily Jones. We'll hear from tomorrow's starter who makes his major league debut. Back to Steve Busby and Tom Green. All right, Rick, thank you.
Now the pitching change has been made, and here is Derek Lowe, the 38-year-old veteran right-hander. Well, Derek in a tough spot. One out, bases loaded against a dangerous hitter. Shelly Duncan has got power. In fact, he hit a pinch hit three-run homer to tie a game against the Orioles the other day. First hit is a Ray who's called up Luke Scott went out of the dis disabled list. But he's got some power. And low misses badly outside. It's one ball, no strikes. Duncan appearing in six ball his sixth ball game now. 286 the average. And low misses outside. It's two and oh. Well, Duncan represents the tying run in this ball game. One out in the top of the eighth inning. And ball three. Well, that is an awful feeling for a manager and a pitching coach to be over there and just nobody that you bring in in a situation of this inning can throw a strike. And ball four, got a walk in a run. It puts the tying runs on base. It's a five to two Ranger lead with Escobar coming up. Duncan, the RBI on the bases loaded walk. Jennings scores. Zobris to third, Longoria to second. And you now Escobar, the hitter now. Escobar 0 for two to 0 for three tonight. I should say. Two for 14 in his career against Derek Lowe. Well, one, one way you can get, one of the best ways to get in trouble with a four run lead is walks. And unfortunately, the Rangers have had a couple this inning. Well, couldn't throw the sinker over, but he dropped the breaking ball into the strike. They had a double play right here, and everything looks a lot better. Well, Escobar has twice hit the ball on the ground tonight. Of course, that's Derek Lowe's strong suit. Sinker is just off the plate outside, one and one. And ball two is low and outside. Lowe studying the signs. Ron Washington studying Derek Lowe. To third. Second for one. That's all they will get. A run crosses home plate. It's a five to three game. But a very big out number two is in the books. As Escobar grounds into a fielder's choice. He gets an RBI. And now Ryan Roberts will come to the plate. Well, this is a big out. Try to stop the bleeding right there. Unfortunately, it wasn't hit hard enough to turn a double play. That would have been a beautiful way to get out of the inning. Well, both those runs charged to the ledger of Michael Kirkman. Alexi Ogando still the pitcher of record for the Rangers. Two outs now. Ryan Roberts, who came on as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning and grounded out, is facing Derek Lowe, who finds the outside corner. With a fastball, it's 0-1. You know, one thing you're, you're looking for in that situation with this kind of a pitcher, sinker ball pitcher, is, is the ground ball to get out of the inning. Derek threw good sinkers to Duncan, just couldn't get one high enough to get it in the strike zone. Low with a 1-1 pitch. That's a bit low. It's two and one. Missing, not missing by much. Borderline could have yep. gone our way. That is outside. Three balls and a strike. Now the problem is when you don't throw enough strikes, you're not going to get the close pitches. And Ron Washington knows that as well as anybody. And the other thing you don't want is in the ninth inning. You don't want Zobrist and Longoria to hit again. Right. But you need to get an out right here to keep that batting order from turning over again. So ripping a miss and the count is full. So with two outs now and a full count on Ryan Roberts. And you know Escobar will take off and Jose Lobaton. 
got in the bat and come out of the on-deck circle should the inning keep on going. And the chopper off the foot of Ryan Roberts, and the count remains three and two. Joe Madden, seeing if his ball club can make a complete comeback in this game. They were trailing five to one. They put two on the board here in the eighth inning. And are threatening more with two outs. Low set, payoff pitch. Ooh, got away with a hanger. Well, I guess he did. The ball was right down the middle of the plate. Roberts had a big swing at it, but came up empty. That's why you take a deep breath as the pitcher and say, glad I got away with that one. Yep. Again on three and two. Got him swinging. Big strikeout from low. The Rays are limited to two runs on two hits and a pair of walks. They lead two. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Rangers five, Rays three. Fox Sports Southwest. In the Rays five threes. We head to the bottom of the eight times for the progressive fan of the game. I got to give it to the Martin family. This is Joe Martin, longtime Ranger fan, decided, you know, this is a perfect night to bring my grandson Jackson to his very first game. He is six weeks old, right? Correct? Jackson here is the progressive fan of the game. Congratulations, Joe. What do you have to say here? Big night? Good night for baseball. All right, let's get a look at big Jackson here. Here we go, Jackson. What do you think, Tom, huh? Not bad, huh? Six Beautiful. weeks old, future say, ball player, up at night. And like who's got the next hitter. beating? Do I? Who's got the next beating? You do. All right, I do. Okay, <laughs> very good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Good to have you out here. Thank you. <laughs> Looks like a yeah, clean hitter to me. He's going to be a pitcher. He's got that snarl on his ah, lip. Could be. Yeah. Kind, of, kind of a mean. I'm well, as we go wait. to the uh, bottom of the eighth, there are a few changes for you. First of all, Jamie Wright, former Ranger on the hill, the man from Oklahoma City. James off to a good start. Been giving up an earned run his first three outings. Sinker ball pitcher. Facing David Murphy to start things off. And the sinker is low for ball one. And a change at first base. Shelly Duncan is now at first base. At second, Ryan Roberts moves from first to second. 1 0 pitch. Ripping a miss. Sean Rodriguez. In left field now, and in right field, Ben Zobrist. So in the outfield, Rodriguez, Jennings, and Zobrist. Infield of Duncan, Roberts, Escobar, and Longoria. Backdoor breaking ball, and he found that unlocked. It is a ball and two strikes to Murph. David 0 for 3. A couple of pop outs 
and a hard line out to center field. 5-3 Rangers on top in the bottom of the eighth. Two balls and two strikes. And if the score stays like this, you can see uh, Joe Nathan getting ready in that Ranger bullpen, sitting on 299 career saves. Right ready. And the 2-2 two -two to Murphy. Hit well to right field. Going back is Zobras, but he has room in front of the warning track. That makes the catch. Murphy got that down toward the trademark a little bit. Right the smile star if he gets the save tonight. Now that's not a misprint either on Mariano Rivera. That is a six. 609. Yeah, think about how good Joe Nathan has been, and he's not halfway to Mariano right. Rivera. Isn't that something? That's not even counting how many saves he's got in postseason. Now here's Nelson Cruz, who's 0 for 3. One strike on the foul ball. Last time up, a pop out to second. Also line to center and fly to center. Big breaking ball bends in from Jamie Wright. It's 0 2. You know, Tommy, you're talking about the, the Rays' ability to fill in the bullpen with guys, and Jamie Wright's one of those guys they brought over and doing a very, very good job for him. Check swing, pitches a little bit high. It's one ball, two strikes. Oh, Jamie's pinpointing the ball with it. 92 mile an hour sinker. He's got about an 88 mile an hour cutter and a curveball. He's, he's got good stuff. Mm -hmm. Right handers ready for the 1 2 pitch. That ball just came in like a left handed cutter. <laughs> and Cruz, uh, I don't think Jamie could throw a ball straight. Ball hit him on the fist and the ankle. Now he's probably wishing right about now he hadn't swung at that. <laughs> Anything but that. Jamie at 6'6, 235 pounds. Ready to uncoil. And call strike three. Now he was not going after that inside pitch again after what he had just done to himself. The previous pitch, he takes that for strike three, and that's two outs for A.J. Brzezinski. Yeah, I don't think Nelly's fooled on this pitch. It's a curveball. Just think he thought it was inside. And borderline pitch. It could have been called inside, but Jamie Wright got the call that time. Now, Brzezinski's had a good night. He's been on board all three times, once by an error, then solo home run and a single. He has scored a couple of runs, takes outside for ball one. Right to the plate. Breaking ball couldn't quite find the outside corner. So AJ with his solo home run in the fourth, his first round tripper in a Ranger uniform. Now with three runs driven in. And a good rip at that 2 0 pitch, fouled it straight back. Right, okay is the sign. And that foul ball will even the count at two and two. AJ Przinsky back in the fourth inning. Boom. There's number one for him in a Ranger uniform. Spoils that right off speed pitch. That's why he doesn't strike out very much. That, that looked like a backdoor pitch. Might have dropped in on the outside corner. 
kind of realized it right at the end and just kind of flicked the bat and spoiled it. And Mac are doing that too. Still two and two. Got him swinging. Yeah, Jamie Wright. A couple of strikeouts the inning works a one, two, three frame. And we are going to the ninth. It's Joe Nathan time here at Rangers Ballpark in Arlington. 5-3, the Rangers on top. On Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Ford. Take the EcoBoost Challenge at your Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Buy the wireless receiver only from ATT Uverse. Visit ATT.com slash free your TV. Rethink possible. And by Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. You know, the ninth inning has arrived in Arlington. Rangers leading five to three. They have out hit the Rays eight to five tonight. And entering the ball game for the fourth time this year, looking for save number two is Joe Nathan. Well, Joe pitched in yesterday's ball game. It wasn't a save situation. But this is a big one for him. Well, the 38-year-old right-hander on, and uh, he will face. Jose Molina in the first pitch. There's a swinging strike one. Molina 0 for 3. He has grounded out, flied out, and struck out tonight. And the next pitch fouled away, and Nathan firing strikes as he has each of the last uh, few times that he's been out there. Started picking up the last week of spring training, and uh, he has carried that right over into the regular season. No balls, two strikes to Molina. Able to lay off the breaking ball. That makes it one and two. Nathan, of course, in his first year in a Ranger uniform last year, 37 saves. It was three and five with a 280 earned run average. To center field, and Gentry's going to have to back up, play it on a hop. A leadoff single for Jose Molina. The Rays now will have the tying run coming to home plate. Yeah, it's one of those balls that very similar to the ball that Elvis hit. And Jennings was playing very shallow in center field, and he caught that ball. Craig's playing a little bit deeper. And that same kind of a ball turned into a base hit. And that's where most people play. Able to get, on, get his hands up above that high fastball and hit the ball solidly. Now here's Kelly Johnson who's over two with a walk. First ball swing, he pops it up. Adrian Beltre coming over the wind, playing tricks with it. Beltre stays with it and able to backhand it. And he is glad that that play is over with. The look on Adrian Beltre. You don't see Adrian Beltre have that kind of look on his face 
very often like oh thank goodness I didn't think I was going to catch it. Looks in his glove like I want to make sure it's in my glove. He knew it was he just likes to do that. <laughs> yep, there it is. Well that is out number one and takes the Rays back to the top of the order for Desmond Jennings. Bluffs a bunt, pulls the bat back in. It's ball one. I don't have any idea. It had to be a strike. That's what Joe Nathan's standing on the mound now, looking down toward home plate, as if to tell Marty Foster, "Hey, what's going on?" Jennings walked and scored his last time to the plate. Other than that, 0 for three. Two balls, no strikes. Nathan ready. Molina a lead at first. And a strike at the knee. Well, according to our Fox tracks, they were all borderline pitches. Borderline pitches in the strike zone, though. Only one's gone Joe's way. Nathan to check it first. And the 2-1. To left field, Murphy headed toward the line. It is hooking. And going foul. Well, Jennings had everybody scattering down there. Well, tomorrow, AT&T tells you we'll be right back here with you at 7 o'clock on Fox Sports Southwest. Rays and the Rangers in game two of this three-game set. Alexio Gondo. Hoping to be able to watch another Ranger victory tomorrow night. Nick Tepish making his major league debut tomorrow. Roberto Hernandez on the hill for Tampa. There goes Molina. Pitch outside. Throw to second is high. And Molina taking advantage of not being held on first as a stolen base. Well, the run doesn't mean anything, but it takes away the double play, which would have been nice. Also a little bit of a risky play. You get thrown out in that situation. It's not the way you wanted to see the second out make. You see him inching off looking at Mitch Moreland gets a running start. And with a running start, anybody can steal second base. Got a three and two now to Desmond Jennings. Nathan okays the sign and comes set. A check of second. Payoff pitch. That foul will try it again. Desmond Jennings hanging tough. Jennings moved over to center field this year with the departure of B.J. Upton. Had been their left fielder. And now a fixture in center. Representing the tying run here in the ninth inning. Rangers leading five to three. Nathan okays Brzezinski's sign. Again the three two. Ian Kinsler on to first. That is out number two. On to third goes Molina. And he's there with two outs now. And Sean Rodriguez is coming to the plate. Darvish and Alexi Ogando, they have been following. Uh, Alexi's been following you in the rotation. <laughs> Darvish going through his comedy routine, at least with Alexi. Yeah, I wonder if he was smart team. speaking Spanish. Could be. Could very well be. English would be kind of a common language for him. Yes, sir. Good strike to Rodriguez. John Rodriguez entered the ball game as a pinch hitter in the eighth inning and fly to left field. Five three Rangers on top. Two outs in the ninth inning. Nathan to the plate. Good block by Perzinski. And the count is even at one and one. Joe Nathan trying to close it out for save number 300. In his career. 
27,355 on hand tonight. The witness, Nathan and the Rangers going against the Rays. Good breaking ball. And the Rays down to their last strike. Joe can go at you with a slider or a curveball. Well, he dropped the curveball on the outside corner. Nice pitch. Hey, Rodriguez, a little hitch in his get along there. <laughs> One two pitch. Very high. Two and two. Here's the guy you want. Next, next hitter is Zobris, then Longoria. Zobris in the on deck circle. Nathan to the line, the 2 2 pitch. And we're going to go 3 and 2 now to Rodriguez. Nathan went with the breaking ball, couldn't quite find the mark. And the count is full. Molina, the runner at third. Nathan working from the windup now. Payoff pitch on the way. Base hit to center field. In to score is Molina. Rodriguez with a base hit on three and two makes it a five to four Ranger lead and brings up Ben Zobrist. Also going to bring Mike Maddox out of the Ranger dugout to go out and talk to Joe Nathan for a moment. Well, the Rays have definitely made it interesting. That's why you play the games. That's why you say it's never over till the last out through seven innings. It was. All Rangers five to one but the Rays have mounted some offense here in the last couple of innings Got a little bit of help in the eighth inning with a couple of walks, but they also had a couple of hits Now they've got a couple of hits a run and now you've got one of the toughest hitters to get out in the league right here And Ben Zobris tough to pitch to They'll take a walk And if you're too careful and walk them, then you've got Longoria to hit next. Yep Zobrist is one for three tonight. He's walked and singled his last two times to the plate. Four for five with a couple of home runs in his career against Joe Nathan. First pitch. Fastball strike. Right on the outside corner. Zobrist flied out his first two times up tonight. Then walked in the sixth. Last time up in the eighth. At a single. Rodriguez with the tying run at first base. And Nathan will keep him close. Ranger infield around to the right for Zobris. The outfield being very deep. No doubles alignment. Two outs in the top of the ninth inning. Another throw to first. That one a much closer play. As Rodriguez back just ahead of the tag by Moreland. Fans knew it was close. He's definitely back, but it yep. is close. He's not going anywhere right now. Yeah, I would think you'd want to let Zobra swing the bat with two outs. Let's put it this way. I'd be surprised if he's going anywhere, but you never know. 0-1 oh, pitch. Making ball hangs outside to even the count. Evan Longoria waiting in that on deck, sir. And Zobris facing Joe Nathan. Zobris representing the go ahead run in this 5 4 ball game. Nathan with a 1 1 pitch. Two balls and a strike. Now Joe's going to. Go back off the uh, back into the mound. Ron Washington saying, you know what? This is the kind of game that gives a manager gray hairs. I guess so. You know, you'd like to sit back and manage an easy win, and that's what it looked like through seven innings, five to one. Joe Nathan ready. The two-one pitch. Very high, three balls and a strike. Crowd, as you can see, majority of them standing. And they are, well, not quite as enthusiastic as they were a 
few pitches ago. Don't like the way that things are turning here in the ninth inning. Rays have scored a run with two outs now. They have the tying run at first base. A three ball, one strike count to Ben Zobrist. Some definite concern on Ranger fans here at the ballpark tonight. We're set to go as Nathan okays the side. The 3 1 pitch. Got the outside corner. So it is a full count with two outs. Rodriguez, the runner at first, will be off and moving with the next Nathan offering. Crowd getting back into it. They want to see the Rangers win their fifth game of the year. They want to see Joe Nathan rack up save number 300. Veteran right is ready, and Rodriguez calls timeout. I should say Zobrist. Zobrist back in there. Nathan again. He's a big side back up on top of Hill. He says okay and comes set. The 3 2 pitch. Outside ball for Call strike three. Call strike three. I didn't think that Marty Foster was going to ring it up, and he did, much to the chagrin of Ben Zobras, who is on his way to first. And the fireworks will sound three times in recognition of save number 300 for Joe Nathan. Well, Joe Madden is living. He's out there talking to crew chief Tim Welke. We can't believe that that was the third strike on Zobras and a controversial end to a tightrope back walked by the Rangers in the last couple of innings. But it goes in the books as a 5-4 Ranger win. Alexio Gondo with the W. He moves to 2-0. and all. Joe Nathan with his second save of the year is 300 in his career. And Joe Batten will be talking about this one for a while. Well, there, you know, there's a lot of close pitches in the game, a lot of close pitches for Joe. But, you know, there's one batter where three pitches look like they could have been strikes. Two of them were called balls. Last pitch, borderline pitch. That one went Joe's way. Third ball coming down. Box tracks will show it's near the outside corner. That one went Joe's way. Zobrist has a pretty good eye at the plate. You know, he's a guy that averages 90 walks a year for the last four years. He is obviously not very happy with the call. And Joe Nathan at the very last second. Oh, okay. Oh, good. We can get out of here. So Nathan with a save is 300th of his career. The Rangers get the win. They move to five and two. The Rays with a loss drop to three and four. And as uh, we get a look at the the excitement of Joe Madden again. Let's head down to the field. We have Emily Jones standing by. Emily. Guys, thank you very much. Well, Joe, a win is a win. A save is a save. You get both tonight. You know, these guys are uh, always kind of tough on me. The, the Rays come out. They they battle. They they uh, put good wood on the ball and, and make things interesting. You know, I never have an easy one against them, so it was nice to get away with a, with a W tonight. Oh, by the way, 300th career save for you. That's got to feel pretty neat. Only 24 guys in Major League history to do, pull that off. You know, it's, it means a lot, but, uh, you know, at the same time right now we're we're still competing and, you know, I still feel like I got some in the tank. So, you know, right now we're just going to keep keep uh, keep plugging along and, and try and get the 400. But, you know, I'll enjoy this tonight um, and we'll go from there. Talk about the youngster Joe Ortiz out of the pen tonight. Uh, you know, we knew we were going to have to rely on some of the young guys. And um, these guys are throwing the ball really, really well right now. And this is really weird listening to myself Isn't talk. Isn't it? Um, 
But the young guys are uh, they're stepping up. Shepers, Ortiz, Robbie Ross, obviously, Kirkman. We're going to rely on these guys heavily throughout the course of the season. Joe, congratulations. Stop listening to yourself talk. We appreciate it. We'll send it back up to you. All right, Emily, thank you. Well, 27,355 on hand tonight. So uh, quite a uh, finish. The Rangers end up winning 5-4 to four the final. And we will take a timeout. we we'll back to wrap things up. And don't forget, the Rangers Live, the postgame show, will be coming along also. 5-4 the final on Fox Sports Southwest. Park, where your Texas Rangers take game one 5-4 over the Tampa Bay Rays. Rick Renner alongside Mark McLemore as we have Rangers live on deck. Controversial ending to this one, Mac. A very good ending, I thought. Rangers <laughs> win. Can't be that much controversy. But yeah, the game ended on a, on a bad pitch, bad call, but in the Rangers' favor, and that's all that matters. Yeah, how about it? What an unbelievable start for your Texas Rangers. Five wins in the first seven games of the year. Our next telecast brought to you by AT&T is tomorrow. Game two with the Tampa Bay Rays. You can see it on Fox Sports Southwest. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock. Coming up next, Rangers Live presented by eSurance with Mac, Emily, Jim Knox, and myself with complete post-game reaction after this one. The final take is now.